All righty. Well, welcome to the second episode of Spelljammer, Crew of the Ebon Heart. Uh, I'm your uh, Dungeon Master for the evening, uh, the Game Weaver. And we have a couple of additions from last time, which I'm just going to do a quick uh, run around. So we're going to introduce some old faces and some new ones. So we'll start with uh, Mel as Coney. Tony? Hey! <laughs> um, the least prepared person today. Um, I am Mel. I am playing Connie. She is a half hawk paladin um, and doesn't like undead, which is real fun. <laughs> Okay, uh, Jade, do you want to introduce yourself, though you have not yet been seen? Uh, hi, I'm Jade, and I will be playing Serenity, who is a half-elf bard, and she's also a sailor, so yay, <laughs> spaceships, pirate, spaceship, <laughs> sailing, stars, yes. Broke the elf, perfect. My job here <laughs> is done. Start. <laughs> Luke, do you want to give us a quick rundown on Prosper? Yes, uh, uh, my name is Luke. Um, I am playing the tarp in the aforementioned episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm playing Prosper. Uh, here is our tiefling cleric. Okay. Uh, Kate, would you give us a quick rundown of Peanut? Uh, so, hi, I'm Kate. I'm playing Peanut. Peanut is a gnome monk and also an investigator. They're going to work out what the heck's going on. <laughs> <laughs> up with that one and could you please introduce yourself ad aka our uh, dowsing rod for traps <laughs> very face. good at finding them checking for them possibly a different thing <laughs> so you did. <laughs> Doors, man. Doors. So, while we wait for Connie to get uh, booted up into Fantasy Grounds, uh, I have a little thing I like to do where, A, it saves me some time, but most importantly, gives the players a little bit more of an advantage than they would normally have. So, any one of you, you're all welcome to go for it. Who wants to do the recap of what happened last time? Now, I will have this <laughs> opened for Prosper and Serenity, because I believe you were watching the stream. Whoever does it will get a point of inspiration, which will count as a D10 added to any ability check, attack, or other role that is not damage. <sighs> so, I only offer the one out at the start of the session. Who wants it? Well, my viewing was sponsored quite heavily uh, by Codeen last week. Uh, <laughs> I think I will not be the person to protect it. As much I, fun as that would be for everyone else. <laughs> uh, I understand. You actually went to space. We're with you. <laughs> I have my notepad out if I can do it if needs be. Uh, I would advise it because if I have to do it, one of the monsters gets that inspiration. Oh, no. <laughs> you said you were being nice. <laughs> just dives into it <laughs> I'll take anything anything I, <laughs> can, I can't say I how good my note taking is but hey Let's so um, session one last time um, Connie Peanut um, yeah. the lovely cleric that I totally remember the name of but we didn't Balthazar Balthazar lives Balthazar does a very horrible person <laughs> <laughs> you horrible, horrible person. <laughs> well, I had it coming. Um, and Bucky all woke up in a lovely cage. Um, they then tried to escape from said cage because uh, they had no weapons whatsoever. Mm -hmm. They then encountered um, the loveliest spider demons that were outside the cage and managed to um, throttle them against the cage and then sort of jointly just beat on it. <laughs> it is lovely. Um, I'm really good at this stuff, honest. And then we got in through went to the next cell and the two elves were dead, but there was nothing to, nothing to loot. Um, we tried to get out of the corridor, uh, which was more difficult than you would think because there were lots of poison doors and traps. <laughs> 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 which, uh, Bucky likes to try and find with his face. Uh, really good 
find tracks <coughs> right there. <laughs> um, we did come across um, several sort of potions and tools and implements and weird experiments, which is always fun, um, including Nazimawa's with it. I got my crazy whip. I did. I got a thorn whip, which is which is very fun. And then we came across a lovely zombie um, beholder. Mm. My notes kind of go a bit terrible after that, and I just go frightened. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the notes of terror. Ah, yes. Notes of terror. Yes, that's the one. Um, and then writing down exactly what frightened means because I kind of love it. Yay. Um, and basically, then we tried to. I did, definitely did not make notes on this part because I was too busy going, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> um, then uh, Balthazar RIP got uh, disintegrated got by the zombie yeah. ball. Mm -hmm. then, oh, Balthazar decided. lives in all of us. Most of us might have inhaled. Uh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> uh, he disintegrated. <laughs> um, promptly retreated, and then went to the other room, where there was um, another mind thing that was delightful. So, um, with one, you know, one person under each arm, Connie's kind of going through <laughs> trying to spell. She's real good at spells, and then she gets knocked out. Luckily, Peanut wakes up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we we got out somehow from there, running very fast. Definitely mm -hmm. didn't really get out of it. I'll say that. <laughs> um, and then we came outside and we found that there was a load of ships um, and then a dark void of stars. Uh, the ships that we encountered, there was a dragon ship, there was a hammer ship, there was a scorpion, there was a pirate ship. The pirate ship had some Yay. And we kind of got Pushed towards the pirate ship, the ship because the spiders come from the spiders. Um, and then there was um, two people, two and one of them had, <laughs> had, 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 and one of them was something under a tarp. <laughs> something under a tarp. <laughs> Story of my life. life. Tarp man. Then, uh, Peanut went into, well, Peanut and Connie went into the captain's chambers um, and found a gilded throne. Um, Mind Jammer was activated as when Peanut sat down. And Peanut is driving. <laughs> spider ship is pursuing us. Uh, massive, massive spider people. Mm. Yeah. All right. I think that's probably enough to have earned some inspiration. So, to bring us back into uh, the scene at large, the room that you're currently in, Peanut, uh, there's you and Connie in there, I believe. Right. Um, it's a part um, of the captain's of chambers. The captain's However, once you've However, sat down, you've sat down um, it uh, is a small segmented, a small segmented pathway. pathway. It's sort of like an off, so like off, off room. So, off room. so there's the actual captain's yeah, chambers the captain's itself, which has the bed and, and everything else that you would find in a normal captain's chambers. Captain's but there's the sort of like a, a pod-like like room, pod -like room to the side that you've gone and sat down on this chair in. As you've sat down and you hear the phrase, mind jammer activated, the door has closed. Door has now, closed. Connie, now, Connie, do you want to be on the inside of that door or the outside of that door? Connie would kind of want to stick close to Peanut. Okay. okay. So you enter into the um, the inside of that door. You see it close. And then you have this elevated feeling like you are being risen up. Um, um, to those people on the outside, which is Bucky, who has just finished basically fighting off some of these Neogi to basically make sure they stay away from the ship. Um, you do actually notice if you look up towards the sort of um, the back end of the ship where there would be a wheel. There is a slowly ascending kind of pod almost. Um, and then all the ship takes off at a incredibly fast speed. Um, um, so, so, in this moment, in this Peanut, moment, you are currently attached to this, um, to this um, chair. Um, chair. You've basically got your hands into the grips, into the grips and you can feel the key that you've just spent you've just flowing spent. through you and you the actual and chair, like some sort of massive circular, circular circuit. circuit. Um, 
Um, you get the impression as long as you are able to put key into it, you can keep the ship going and you have complete control over the direction in which it goes. Now, for those people at home, Spelljammer is an old system, so there's not really a lot of um, rules that work to it that work to it at the moment. There's a few homebrews, nothing I've managed to look into. However, I have managed to come up with a couple of little bits based on some otherwise. So, if people would check in their notes sections, I'm going to give you all some presents. Mm. Yay. There's presents. There will be a selection of notes discussing spell jamming and general bits involving combat how the air works etc none of that is essential to find out right this second and you'll probably find out in game it's just there for your reference if you want to look it over also you'll probably find the stats for the ebon heart in there as well which you would, uh, these are in the notes section of the top right hand corner oh top right okay so in regards to the ebon heart you get this instantaneous feeling for being able to look over the whole ship peanut where from where you are these are the things you can currently see the forecastle and quarter deck now on the forecastle of the ship itself is some sort of weird arcane looking ballista um it's it's clearly designed in some way, shape, or form to be able to handle ship to ship combat, but given everything that you currently perceive, which bear in mind is not just the ship itself, it is the surrounding stars. You can feel yourself moving through space at a rather disorientating sort of flying feeling. Um, you have no control over the ballista, and you imagine that probably needs to be manned by other people. But if you actually look, you will see the little um, sort of box that you have been brought up in, which Connie, Connie should be on the inside of. <laughs> I'm now regretting this decision, but hey. <laughs> this then brings you to the main deck itself. Now... Now, you can see, you can currently see holding see sort of onto one sort of the gang rails uh, as he's being pulled along, uh, Bucky. Uh, Bucky. Um, you can, uh, your yes. like, legs are half sort of half dangling, flying, because this was a sudden acceleration in speed. After a moment, you managed to get yourself back to your feet. But this is the the feeling for the um, basically the main deck. You can almost perceive the captain's quarters <coughs> where you came out of a room that looks like it's designed for uh, officer meetings and a small selection of beds that either house officers or whoever else is in the area next you feel even lower and manage to come across the lower parts of the decks some some parts of the brig uh, guest quarters a selection of crates that you can almost distinctively know what's in them there are bits of food stored water <coughs> it looks like this was basically designed to be going on a large voyage before whatever happened managed to happen and finally rations i understand underneath on the lower deck is even more of these um barrels of fresh water um various sort of like boxes worth of salted pork and then some open spaces that could just be used for pretty much anything you wanted Okay. So that's the, uh, the general feel. The only other thing that does actually register in your mind is something else that's on the um, vessel. It's the two people that are in the cages. The first one, you can basically get an intrinsic view of. Uh, they're on the main deck. And Serenity, would you give a very quick description of your massively unconscious form? <laughs> Serenity is a... Uh, uh, quite a rosy toned half elf who has very long wavy chestnut hair um, which is being held back by a bandana um, like a scarf bandana so it's not covering her actually hair um, she is dressed in a off the shoulder white um, blouse top that goes across her chest um, she's wearing like a little underbus corset and she's got a quite nice sort of almost like a bordello style skirt um, with just under the knee um, brown boots which are like laced up okay okay um, 
Um, you do actually, as you your, do sort actually, of, as your sort of your almost mind's eyes almost casting mind's over Serenity, you do get what race she is. You get um, a lot of the, you get a lot of sort of sigils that seem to appear in front of your vision that you're currently unable to translate. Um, but you do get the feeling that it's like the ship at the moment is yourself while you're connected to it, which does mean that you do register what is under the tarp. Now, Prosper, can you give a quick description of yourself? Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> Prosper is... Uh, I think Prosper's frozen. I think Prosper has frozen. Prosper's frozen. No, the tarp. It's cursed. Uh, <laughs> cursed tarps, the worst kind of tarp. So apparently the tarp seems to be blocking a bit more of your vision than you originally thought. <laughs> and as the, the sort of the backlog of the buffering is taking place, you'll eventually get that information caught up. Um, what you do recognize is there is a certain level of infernal blood there, which is possibly a tiefling or some other. Uh, and there's a very light aura of divine power mildly radiating off of him. Okay. So... So, while we are, again, we waiting are, for our, uh, our Tiefling uh, to come back, to come um, back. you have basically uh, accelerated have off to... Uh, I can still hear it <laughs> sort of half catching <laughs> up. <laughs> uh, you have accelerated uh, off to what is basically, what in your head, you recognize as spell jamming speed. Spell jamming. You don't know what that means, what that but it does seem to be nope. impossibly fast. As in, faster than any land animal or um, other item that you've ever managed to uh, come across. Um, <laughs> Does anyone speak, Tap? I, I think it's a form of infernal, but I can't be sure. Um, so... Uh, the vessel is moving at this kind of speed and you see behind you the sort of little black dot of what is clearly the spider that is not catching up but maintaining a sort of pace. Um, Bucky, as you're seeing yes. everything in and around the area, you're just seeing stars go flying by, you're seeing, um, what is it, uh, lights from what must be errant gases and nebulas just going off and, off and beyond. It's more than you're willing to process entirely. Um, but the thing that's more confusing is as you're looking sort of around to try and get some level of understanding, where you're looking at Serenity and um, Prosper, you can see this ghostly shape of Peanut just kind of looking down at them. <laughs> Ghostly. <laughs> it seems ghostly. You, he don't know. Almost see through. Uh, am I am I able to walk around now? Or yeah, fully able yeah, to move. I'll go pottering over to the the peanut ghost, <laughs> and and try and have that peanut peanut and tap her on the shoulder. Okay. I'll try. So. Bzz. I'm going to provide you with a little circular token there, Peanut, that will represent your sort of astral form. It's currently on the main deck. You can see and interact with things as that form. Um, Bucky, you basically just going up and just trying to put a hand through? Yeah, yeah. Right. You place your hand against Peanut, and unless Peanut resists... Nope. Uh, your uh, fingers your sort of fingers pass into her shoulder. There is a very weird very sort of weird pins and needles feeling going down to your uh, the middle of your hand. It goes a little yep. numb. But it's not. And is out. Yeah. And is out. Yeah, it, it lingers for a second or two, and then you can just sort of shake it and start moving again. Uh, Pe peanut, peanut. I'm I'm waving in front of her. <laughs> yeah, I I, I can yeah, I, I can I, see you. Hello. See you. Hello. Um, Why are you dead? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> But why? Why would, so why, what, would I, why would I be dead? <laughs> well, you're a ghost. I just looked down and I was like, oh, ask me. Don't know what just happened with Prosper. That tarp is weird. Do you want to stay away from it? I am not touching that tarp. I don't like the look of it. <laughs> it's a nasty tarp. Um, do, well, are these? Uh, uh, 
Uh, I'm looking more at Serenity because I can actually see them. Um, are they alive? Can you tell? Can I tell? I can tell, can't I? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I think they're uh, alive. They are. They do uh, seem to resonate in life signs. You can tell just by the fact of where they're laid. There's this the breathings coming from. You can almost hear where their heartbeat is. So yes, they are very much alive underneath that uh, tarp and cage. They're alive. The tarp's alive. Well, I don't think it's a tarp, but <laughs> whatever's there, it's definitely not dead. Um, are you? Are you? Okay. okay. <laughs> I, don't quite I don't quite understand, understand what is what going on. Going on. <laughs> um, um, is that to Bucky? Is that to Bucky? Yeah, that's to Bucky. Yeah, that's to Bucky. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. I've never spoken to a, a dead person that's not dead before. Uh, I'm not dead. <laughs> but you're a ghost. I don't understand. You say you don't understand. I'm having a meltdown here. Uh, can Connie. I, uh, can Connie. I, about this point in time, while you're sort of looking at Peanut, you can see that Peanut's eyes are closed. Um, she's not, she is there, but she's not there. There's some part of her that seems to have moved on. Um, you do get the feeling, if you wished to, that the wall is not solid. You could leave this chamber at any point. Okay. She's like going to wave a hand in front of her face, and when she doesn't get a response, she's like, off she goes. <laughs> Okay, so you head out and then down the stairs, and you can currently see um, Bucky and a ghostly peanut. So what were you going to say, sorry, uh, peanut, before I interrupted you? Um, I wasn't, well, I was going to ask if I can see myself. Is there anything blocking me from seeing myself in the chair? Um, if you want to head up that way, uh, yes, you can definitely go uh, up and into that little room. You sort of pass by Connie on the way past, who just sort of gives you the, what the hell, on the, as uh, you're walking through. You move into the chamber, and yes, you can stare at yourself for a bit if you want. Uh, wow. This is, <laughs> this is trippy. <laughs> uh, I've done weird things as a monk, but whoa. <laughs> I like poke myself on the shoulder. <laughs> there is possible? a mild static feedback, and you can see that on your hand on the chair where you've poked yourself, there's a slight reddening from where it's almost like a burn. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> I, like, I step back nice and slow. Um, uh, so, uh, wh where are we going? Does anyone know? Because uh, she hasn't quite clocked that she's actually controlling where the ship's going. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you pull the tart back and can see uh, the image of Prosper. Um, dressed in sort of Kingfisher-esque colours, multi uh, basically multi-toned and hued. Uh, there's a spear down at the side of him. He looks like he's got some mild bruising around his face. Um, definitely looks like he's been in some sort of a fight. Uh, it's about this point in time, as you're sort of rummaging around at the side, uh, Serenity, you start to come to consciousness. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Yay, consciousness. Hello. Hello. Uh, uh. Hello. Hello. I have come back down the stairs now. <laughs> she's, she's not dead. For no, I'm not dead. Peanuts, and you're you not dead. Don't walk down the stairs, you just appear again at the side. Fantastic. Hello. Know how you've done it, but you suddenly just jump out of nowhere. Well, <laughs> apparently I can. <laughs> like, I tried waving at you and then you walked past. I'm so confused right now. Hi. <laughs> this isn't my ship. No, but it is a ship. Mm. <laughs> and you're definitely not my crew. Uh, uh... <laughs> and you're definitely... In a cage. <laughs> mm. Yes, this this does look like a cage. You are very observant. Why am I in a cage? It wasn't us. <laughs> a 
Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, 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 oh. She knows. Oh, <laughs> oh, Captain is. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. Can you, yes, can you get me out the cage, please? Please, Cam. Alrighty, you move around to the point where you can see that there is actually a lock to this cage. And remembering your time from before, uh, and the best way being obviously to force the lock, you completely ignore that and start trying to bend the bars. Um, how do you want to open? No, how do you want to open it? Do you want to go for the lock? Do you want to try the uh, try test the metal? Connie gives Bucky a look. Look, do you remember what happened last time? Yeah, this Do you, do you want to go for the lock rather than the bars? You can go for the bars. <laughs> okay. Can I get an athletics check then, please? <laughs> so you grab a hold of the two and start to strain and pull. They seem very sturdy. It looks like they're designed to hold um, almost anything, to be honest. Possibly large creatures. The actual size of it does look like it could hold a large creature if it was crammed sort of uncomfortably. Um, but you're getting no real purchase. You do start <laughs> to hear a slight whine as the top parts and the bottom parts of the bars start to give ever so slightly. You carry on this roach, you'll manage it eventually, but not this round. I'm not sure this is the most efficient manner. I, I mean, I will give you a five out of seven for effort, but I will give you an F for execution. <laughs> Uh, as far as you're aware, probably. <laughs> um, do, do you want me to try? Okay. <laughs> do you want to try yourself or would you like to assist Bucky? I kind of want to try the actual lock. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, you've got no experience necessarily with picking locks, do you? No. No, right. but I can try and break the lock. That's so, I will say it's again an athletics check, but the DC will be different to what Bucky's having to deal with. Fun times. That might be more, it might be less. I... Why is it not letting me roll? Two seconds. Come on, roll. No rolling for you. Fantasy grounds being its yep. usual fun self. Mm -hmm. um, you're roll, double clicking on the actual the plus five, aren't you? Nope. Why do I? <laughs> oh, it's a three. You sort of take a half step <laughs> back like and almost Sparta kick the cage. You feel the reverb going up your knee and into your sort of thigh, and you stand yourself up going, that looks pretty sturdy, and try your best not to just go, ow, ow. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> Can I yeah. do anything um, in this weird corporeal form at all? Um, you can, unfortunately, not. While well, you can interact with the world, there is no. You don't have really a strength presence, as it were. Can I? Um, can I go actually in the cage? Yes, you just walk <laughs> into the cage. And your your body passes through. It feels weird. But it's almost like you, uh, like the, the entire of the ship is now part of you. So uh, since that's connected to a part of it, you can just appear there. Hello. <laughs> uh, I've never met uh, a ghost before. Hmm? It says I've never met a ghost before. Oh, she's not I'm a ghost. not a ghost. I'm still very much alive. I just... I'm um, having an interesting experience. Um, Are you having an out-of-body experience? I can leave this cage just as easily I came in it, so do you want the company or not? Peanut, would you make me a dexterity saving throw, please? Oh. <laughs> 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 a saving throw? 
Yes, please. Mm. Now, now, you've come to realize that there is obviously gravity and air and everything else on this ship. However, there is a slight odd feeling in everyone's stomach as the ship imperceptibly seems to move. Um, in actuality, the ship has gone from this to this as a streaming bolt of energy goes straight past it from behind. What did I just do? <laughs> what, what, what is... I think you're being attacked. Can I, like, just check behind us? <laughs> um, to everyone else, you can see just sort of, if you lean your head around, you can see in the distance that sort of black shape having now gone that little bit closer. Um, but to you, Peanuts, given the fact that you again have the sensors of the ship, you can actually sort of almost get the battle effects worth. You can actually see the spider as it's slowly coming closer. And at the top of it, part of the um, back to its uh, spinneret has broken away and a sort of catapult has been brought up on top. It is now firing at you and then reloading. Uh, we have an issue. Uh, <laughs> I thought we got away from them. Okay. Um, I'm... Just looking at all of the like guns and ways of hitting things, um, I appear in front of everyone else again. Um, does anyone know how to use these things? <laughs> I do. Oh, good. Try and get you out then. Um... <laughs> should, we, should we should we try it together, Connie? Yeah, let's try it together. Let's try it together. Do you want to grab the lock of the bars? I mean, we both had just as much luck as each other, so... <laughs> uh, the lock is probably going to be easier. So, I'd like to help Connie smash the lock. Okay, so okay. Connie's doing the primary Connie's test, the primary and you're giving her advantage. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, in that case, would you roll with advantage, Connie, on an athletics check for you, please? Still haven't found the advantage button, but I'll just roll it twice. That'll do. That'll do. That's a 19 or a 17. So 19. Uh, between the pair of you, you kind of reason the lock's probably going to be the best point. So as you're putting your boot onto more direct points, uh, Connie, uh, Bucky's just heavy shoulder slab. <laughs> if you want to chew through it, that's another option. Um, I'll do that. Uh, you kind of start gnawing a little bit on it, then just go, actually... Slam! <laughs> uh, just drive your el drive your elbow and shoulder into the side. Uh, as uh, you kind of build a small rhythm up, eventually there's this cracking sound and the door <laughs> swings open. Ah, fantastic! Okay. Um... <laughs> you are currently free, Serenity. <laughs> the, the other one's moving. <coughs> oh, they okay. are moving. There is actually uh... some life looking like it's in Prosper. <laughs> Start uh... to the top it moves. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, the only one in a cage. That's nice. Um. Well. Uh. Um. Uh, um you. You said you can shoot these things. Uh. What was your name? Sorry. Oh. My apologies. I'm Serenity. Ah, Serenity. Hello. I'm Peanut. Uh. Peanut, uh hmm. Help. <laughs> I signaled what he is. <laughs> Just really quickly oh, no. for introduction. Connie. Connie. I'm Bucky, the rogue. It's nice to meet you all. Um, perhaps we should uh, get our this one, and I point to Prosper, out of the cage. Prosper, it's about this point in time you've half sort of rolled over your eyes, blinking, and this all you've had is this barrage of voices left, right, and centre. Um, one more try at the description for me, please. Hope it Hopefully we'll you. get through it this time. Um, Prosper is um, not going to read this out to you internal this time. Um, so um, sort of medium uh, to tallish um, tiefling, uh, dove, sort of grey, white skin, crazy curly uh, ginger sort of uh, shoulder length hair um, and curling horns. Um, and he's kind of dressed mostly in kind of uh, almost like cobalt blues. Um, and he is wearing steel mail under the top. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> Under the top. <laughs> you are referenced a few times by Serenity. It's just kind of pointing down to saying to wake you up, but you are currently awake. Okay, Koki. I think what he will do then is kind of have a peek out from underneath the tarp because how he ended up under there, he's not sure what's on the other side of it and doesn't necessarily want to be making friends with the many-legged, sneaky, bad friends uh, again like he did uh, last time he encountered them. Uh, so, like, cautiously, like, you know, when you're pretending to be asleep, so you're just kind of like... No. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like <laughs> what he can see before like before struggling out uh, from underneath. Um, so seeing no no badness. Yeah. Necessarily. No badness. Um, <laughs> he's gonna kind of shrug off <laughs> off the tarp <laughs> and kind of set up. And kind of take in what the heck's going on. Wow. Oh, okay. Wow. Look at that hair. <laughs> That's paid up. She's not dead. Um, yeah, absolutely not dead. Kind of flattened from. <laughs> <laughs> Still a lot of it. Uh, great. Uh, you're moving. Hello. And I like look around, or like walk up to the cage or something, just to kind of be like, hello. <laughs> like you, you disappear you get from one point like, and appear from the other yes. side of it. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. He's talking to, he's talking to you, Peter. Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, right, we don't have time for this. Um, uh, We're going to die as well, Peter. No, no, I'm not dead. Right. What is going on? Is this Can you lock pick? Just I'm looking at... Are you, are you, are you, are you, the moment, I guess it is, our ship. Um, uh, I look at Serenity. It, 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 are you with the things with the lots of legs and... Um, spiders, spiders. We don't, we don't like the big spider things. Don't worry. Mm. <laughs> they're they're the worst. Um, Serenity, can you like lockpick at all? Like actually lockpick? I give a pointed glare at Bucky. <laughs> no. Whoa, whoa, no. Whoa, whoa. No. I'm, I'm, a, I'm okay. A, I'm a bard. I don't I don't lockpick. Oh, okay. Bucky, Fair enough. Bucky, we just got to do our usual thing. Come on. <sighs> While this is all going on, you're just getting like eyeballed from like someone who is scooting further and further back into the cage, away from what, whatever is going on. I'm just gonna kneel down at the side of the cage and just be like, I love your outfit. It's so blue. Oh, reminds me of the sea. <laughs> Thank I at, you. I look at Connie. We're all gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> What is going on? We're trying to get you out your cage, mate. Connie, athletics check and advantage as you and Bucky start <laughs> wailing on the lock. <sighs> oh, boy. Oh, no. Yay! Yeah! Oh. Natural 20! Natural 20. You've... Someone donate 50 quid to somebody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You've built this to an almost art form now. You kind of just give that slight nod to Bucky. Bucky gives a slight nod to you. The real fist bump. So it like turns and just smash. <laughs> the fist bump follows. Uh, the doors open. Prosper, you are currently free, as is Serenity. Amazing. Amazing. No and one's in a cage. Like he's up and out. Okay. Welcome to the uh, the dead crew. Is the ship still oh, sideways? Um, well, the gravity plane that you currently have on this ship does mean that at no point in time have you actually turn sideways. Space is obviously three-dimensional and weird at the best of times. Um, but it hasn't changed from where it was. That said, roll me a dexterity saving throw. Yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, so it started like this. It changes to this. And now it's like this. As you're now going okay. up rather than straight. Mm. If there is such a thing as up in space. Uh, but again, it kind of no. there is a maneuver around as there is another bolt of some sort of dark green, almost poisonous looking energy going past you. Okay, we we kind of need to deal with that. <laughs> yeah, we do. Um, Are we, can we use that thing at the front and a point at the big crossbow? What do you mean the ballista? Yeah, that. The, 
Ross Bolton, <laughs> can you shoot them with it? Well, I mean, at the moment, we're facing in the other direction. Well, we? <laughs> well, the ship is behind us and the ballista is at the front of the ship. Excuse me. That's, uh, and what is, what, going, what is going on? We're getting shot at, mate. Uh -huh. By, by big horrible spider people. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. Big as, nasties. Uh, as the angle of the ship is changing, you almost can... Because the ship has basically moved to an almost straight up, you can see where the spider is behind you. Um, for reference there, to re-give you another picture's worth of it, uh, it looks very much <coughs> like the following. It has a sort of uh, web-like sail that comes back from between its two front um, pointed out arms. That portion on the back where it's red, the top of it seems to have sort of fallen away. And there are, from where you can see Peanut, not where anyone else can see because of, again, the distance, um, multiple of those little creatures um, that seem to be just ratcheting back for another shot as it's being aimed. The spider itself moves into the same kind of pattern, so it is still directly behind and directly following you how how far in distance is the ship from us well it's probably about here where i bring up the map then isn't it <laughs> so um first things first to note is at the moment you are moving at such a high speed uh peanut that most of the surrounding area is physically impossible to get a decent sort of bead on. However, there is an almost weird magical sense that comes with it. Uh, so, while everybody else is just seeing sort of flashing lights and blackness passing them by, you can see the current um, asteroid field that your tribe's about to enter. Oh no. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, yes. Would that be the large star map? Yep. Oh, and there is this <coughs> I don't so, like it. As of the moment, you currently have one front-facing weapon, which is the ballista, and you have one 360-degree catapult that is literally right to the side of you. Uh, there is a store of what looks like uh, ammunition for it. However, um, for reference, sorry, this looks again like one of those things you have seen before, the arcane-looking weaponry. Um, as far as you remember, it didn't need ammunition. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's a 360 degrees worth of arc from that. Now, at the moment, you currently are facing forward, so the ballista is useless. The catapult, on the other hand, potentially still has some level of uh, worth to it. Each one of these squares, you will t I will take the assumption, is the effective equivalent of five feet in terms of movement. Uh, however, as a rule, da, 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 let me just quickly bring up the uh, Ebenhart stats. Um, you're looking at about the uh, looking about 45 feet in terms of squares that you can move. Now that is literally just has D and D translate it. What it actually comes to at this kind of speed is closer to maybe four miles every one section. You are moving incredibly fast. Okay. So if I was to stand on the back of the ship, for example, the distance between the back of the ship and the front of the spider ship would be... Uh, is measurable in... Again, given the speed you're moving at, everything seems to be dilating, but you would probably take the measure of miles away. Maybe okay. a mile and a bit, too. Because of the fact that there is very little obstruction between here and there, it's almost still a perfect view towards it, but you can't see any sort of intricacies of what's happening on the ship, mm. whereas whoever is plugged into the Spelljammer help can. Okay. <coughs> Basically, they've got access to the active sensors. Mm. Mm. Cool. So, okay. uh, one other thing you do realise, though, Peanuts, being plugged into this thing, if you want to fire at it, this ship requires to drop out of spell jamming speed to do so. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> my my um, corporeal form's just looking at the catapult like, 
uh, uh, looking, <laughs> disappearing, looking at the spider, coming back, looking at the catapult, like, uh, <laughs> right. Uh, mm, okay. Um, so I, I look at um, Serenity, who obviously looks like a pirate. Uh, you you said you sh you shot these things before, yes, correct? Uh, yeah, that's correct. Okay. I have been on quite a few ships, so I know how to handle it. I don't think any of us have ever been on a ship. I might be wrong. Correct <coughs> me if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, I've been on a ship. Thank you, Bucky, for your contribution. Uh, <laughs> I mean, being on a ship and sailing a ship are two very different things. Yeah, uh, I realise. Um, okay, we, uh, if, uh, we, uh, oh. <laughs> Would you like some helpful advice, Peanut? Yes, please. Okay. So, the ballista on the front of the ship, that is our most powerful weapon that we have on the ship, purely because it uses arcane power to fire it. Right. Okay. As terrifying as this might sound, we're going to need this ship to face the other way. Look, I'm still looking at the big catapult thing. Can't we just use that? I mean, we could. Yeah? We could. Is it not as, is it not as good? It be as effective. I mean, yeah. the catapult will be effective, but... The arcane ballista would be more effective. Okay. Uh, the other ship. I understand. Can we can we just try the catapult first? Because I don't really like the idea of um Rubbing turning through. around <laughs> and looking at this thing. Um. Yeah. By all means, you are the captain. <laughs> captain Peanut. Captain Peanut. Yeah, has a nice ring to it. Anyway. Um. Yeah, if you could, if you could fire the catapult, that would be that would be helpful, and we'll just see how how well it works. Do you actually uh, have ammunition on the ship? Peanut um, gets there to save. There is a sudden jarring crack as the back of the ship oh. just takes a a thudding, um, almost. To your eyes, Peanut, like there's a red flash from the back of the ship. Uh, you can feel pain, but you aren't hurt. Uh, everyone else just sort of feels the ship shift and move. Um, across your eye, Peanut, you just start seeing little arcane runes appear in green, um, one of which you now can translate as spell, jam, um, spell jamming drive offline. And the ship just drops back into wild space. Oh, no. Oh, that's not good. Ow, first of um, all. The uh, ship is still movable. It just no longer has spell jamming speed. You do have now the ability to activate and use your weapons, but you... Let's just say you don't have warp drive. <coughs> okay. Um, well, just weapon time it is. Uh, I'm going to try and turn the ship around to face the thing. <laughs> And okay. maybe try and reverse while, like, at the slow speed I can go at, still be, like, reverse. <laughs> there is no reverse, unfortunately. All things Darn. are still be done forwards. It is still a ship at the end of the day. Uh, it's kind of catching parts of solar winds and stuff in the sails. Um, and then for that reason, it does still work on a forward momentum. You can turn it, but you can't hmm. just sort of just turn on the spot. No, yeah, yeah. Um, um, so um, I want to try and turn it around. So every uh, maybe so we face, uh, and every two hexes you can make a turn to the left or right. You have the map in front of you. You have the um, uh, ebon heart. Make your moves. I'm looking. I'm thinking. Uh, when it comes to moving hexes, does it have to move along? <laughs> in a straight line or kind of would like would that you be okay are technically like that. That, yeah basically it would be riding it so that's too straight ahead now you can make a turn to the left or right 
do, if you do, so do. chose. <laughs> uh, it would only be a quarter, so you're looking at basically <laughs> that as your next hex or that as your next hex. Okay. <laughs> head towards the giant rocks, Peanut. Head towards... No. no. Don't, head, don't head towards the uh, giant no. rocks. Eh? Is that okay? Is that uh, not okay? Yeah. It would then still be in a straight line, so that's there fine. Would be yeah. But you can now make a turn again. <laughs> so now it could be there. <laughs> yep. And then another square forward. <laughs> and now you can make another turn. But that is 30 foot's worth of move done effectively at your 45. I don't really want to make another turn because I'm almost crashing through an asteroid. <laughs> Such is the danger. So you've not got a particularly uh, high control over the ship yet. You don't really know what you're doing. Uh, I would okay. agree. <laughs> so this way, yes. <laughs> um, from there, the next one would be that way, I believe. I was. So that, I, that would be going in a straight. Okay, I was up. Oh, here that's before. a straight line. So yeah. that's a straight line to keep going. So, so then, is yeah, it okay? it's that way, then that way. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's 40. Um, I get one more, right? Yep. I'm Which going there. there. Am I now pointing at it? <laughs> uh, you have basically brought you... The actual prow of the ship is basically facing down this line. <laughs> uh, but the angle on a, um, a ballista is effectively like a cone, so it is in arc yes. to shoot at, yes. Great. Okay, I did the thing. <laughs> I I think it is no surprise where Serenity is is moving to. Okay, so you're heading up towards that ballista then. Oh yeah. All right. What's everyone else doing while they're on deck? Um. <laughs> is there any spears? Um, you can have a look around in the hole, see if there's anything down there. There does appear to be sort of almost like mooring hooks um, off and tucked under the edge of the um, the rail, usually used for, like, boarding action <coughs> or hooking onto a, um, a dock. Um, they are particularly sharp on one end and basically have a hook to them, so there's three or four of those you can gather up. Effectively, Spears. I will gather them up. All right, you make a point of running around. <laughs> May I ask what the intent of those is? Are you gonna when you I'm going start to throwing? launch the first one to test the range? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so Let's see if I can throw it four miles through space. <laughs> now, <laughs> interesting. Uh, okay, that's your intent. What is Connie and Prosper's intent, and then we'll run through how things pan out. Connie's kind of stuck, really. She's on a ship that she doesn't know how to sail, and she doesn't really do range. So she's a bit like, how can I help? Is there anything that you need me to do? Um, um, you could try and man the catapult. <laughs> sure. <laughs> You're good at attacking things. <laughs> so, you can see the catapult itself does have sort of a handle that would allow you to rotate it around. Basically, with a bit of a bit of forward momentum, you can bring it so the catapult is in a rough arc to where the actual uh, the death spider is. Um, as you sort of ratchet it back, you can see a in the bowl of where the uh, catapult is to put ammo in, it kind of has arcane runes traced down to the centre, and the second it locks back into place, you just see all of them flare, and this ball of sort of bluish energy appears in it. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> is, is Serenity, is this safe to fire? Is this how I do it? Serenity, you're basically pointing and aiming the ballista at the moment. Um, when it gets to everyone having made their choice, I will launch the, the uh, ballista, I'll launch the uh, catapult. But you can still interact vocally. Serenity, help! <laughs> what do you need help with? It's 
It's a catapult. That's. It's not hard to. <sighs> don't do this. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to keep you... drive a ship, and I'm doing it. So Did... get on with it. <laughs> okay, Connie. Do you have the ammunition? It's got a thing in it that's lighting up. So I'm gonna guess yes. It's got a. Okay, explain the the thing that's lighting up. <laughs> you can't. Ex <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna leave the best, and I'm gonna go and look at what Connie's seeing. You basically turn around, <laughs> put yourself over the, um, the the railing, and looking down, you can see that the catapult itself does have almost like a fireball charged in the centre of it, but it's basically burning ever so slightly blue. Okay. <laughs> Um, um, wow, I actually coughed to the point my brain stopped functioning for a second. <laughs> so the, the, the fireball in, in the actual catapult cup is a little blue ball. Correct? Yeah, it basically looks like ammunition. Okay. Okay. So, well, yes, it's got ammunition in. All you need to do is fire it. Okay, thanks. Prosper, thank you. What is your intention? Um, I think Prosper has taken maybe five to ten seconds to realise he's in the stars um, yep. and have a little <laughs> bit of an existential crisis um, and then and then hightail it after Serenity, who seems to be the only person that has any idea of what's going on, so figures stick close to her. Right, so you <laughs> come the tearing up the stairs. Plant yourself at the ballista along with Serenity. So, the Ebon Heart brings itself around to basically point down at the Death Spider. So, the very first things I want you to do right <coughs> now, I'm going to target said Death Spider. And looking over the bits, we're going to fire one ballista shot and we're going to fire one catapult shot and then we're going to have Bucky throw um, just one attack. I've only got one attack, I think. Yep, so we're going to have you from here throw one of the um, spears at it as well. <laughs> okay, uh, so just as a quick question, can I get Serenity's dexterity bonus, please? Uh, my dexterity bonus uh, da -da 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 is a plus two. Okay, that'll equate it, counting the fact that it's an arcane weapon and everything else, to a plus six. Yes. Um, what I'm going to do, I... Just out of interest, what can you currently see under the Ebon... Basically, the Ebon Heart in the combat tracker? Top right. Uh, that was me. Yep. Uh, what can I see under the Ebon Heart? Target yep. Steph Spider. That's it? Cool, right. Bear with me a second. I will give you some level of control over it. If you can see the character sheet now, if you go down to where it says Fire Ballista, you should be able to double click on the plus six to hit. Uh, let's see. <coughs> do, 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 do. Traits, actions, options, Fire Ballista. Uh, range attack, plus six to hit. Oh, nice. All right, so the first ballista bolt comes flying out and smashes into the side of the Death Spider. There's a arcing blue sort of energy um, blast that goes between point to point. Uh, I would like you now to roll the damage, which is 3d10 piercing. It takes 23 points of damage. You see part of the um, the silver, the, the spider sort of mangle and change um, under the impact. Uh, next, I'm going to give some control to Connie. And you should, if you scroll all the way down, be able to see the fire manganel. 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 Oh, is it under my actions then? Is it? It should be under actions on the Ebon Heart character I've just brought up for you. Oh, I just closed the Ebon Heart character sheet. And there it is again. Uh, where's actions on this bit? It's um, right down all the way at the bottom. Okay, but why won't it let me do anything on so it? So where it says range weapon attack, like hover your mouse over it, should highlight into a little blue box. Ah, okay. Click that, double click it. 
So that's yeah. right. Oh, one. oh no. Oh dear. Oh, so. No. I told you we were all going to I mean, die. You <laughs> pull a lever um, and make the attempt to launch the um, Manganel's um, payload. You just see the uh, cup blink out as nothing actually happens. <laughs> I did it wrong. I did it wrong. <laughs> What do you what do you mean you did it wrong, Connie? All you had to do was was fire it. It it was it was set up for you. Connie. Didn't work. Didn't work. Oh. oh my star. So, um uh, let's see here. Bucky, I'm going to have you target the death spider. I am ready. Uh do you have a spear already on your sheet or am I gonna have to give you I'm gonna have to give you one, aren't I? Use your javelin. The javelin would be the best option for it. The uh one with a little bomb next to it. But what I need you to do, um Yeah, no, just straight up roll it. Straight up roll it. <laughs> now Please tell me I get it over the edge. <laughs> Pro tip for those people who uh, understand any form of space mechanics. Um, space has no ability to, has no resistance to it. So basically throwing that spear, it just, you can half stumble and throw it straight down. Somewhere, somehow, that's going to hit a planet. Someone's going to have a bad day. <laughs> but not that death spider. <laughs> yep. I was aiming for the guy who stood on the corner on the planet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. okay. Um, so, with no action from Prosper effectively and Peanut having made the manoeuvring actions, it's now okay. the Death Spider's turn. Oh. Now, this thing is a lot more highly manoeuvrable than um, <laughs> of course you it guys. Is. Um, as it kind of moves almost organically you can see it sort of twist and turn its legs and just almost skid through space it's going to move to here and change wow. uh and then it's going to fire its two catapults the first one is a hit the second one is a miss so that is 5d10 bludgeoning damage <laughs> The other oh, half wow. 32 points of damage, and you just oh, see again, oh, you know, this flash of sudden pain as you can see the bolt <laughs> impact into the side. There's parts of the um, wood that seem to splinter and break away. Nothing too heavy. Um, you think it's maybe got maybe 10 times that much in damage, but it cannot take that all day. Uh, how? Okay. This is, this is not good. Captain, um, I missed. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I would like everyone to declare their actions again. We'll start with Hiring. Yeah. Um, Since I'm now completely facing in the wrong direction. Okay. <coughs> you, <are>. <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, lower your speed um, uh, if you want to turn slower. So, basically, if you want to basically move one and turn, that's fine, but you can only move half your movement speed. Well, I might be doing that. <laughs> um, I've already moved one the last time. Do I need to move one again, I'm guessing? Um, no matter what, you must always move one forward due to the inertia. Okay, so we're going over here. <laughs> now, um, if you're retracting the sails, you will reduce yourself to a further 15 feet worth of movement, but you can make your course corrections every one. Okay. No, no, no. 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 <laughs> I'm facing in the right direction. Do you want uh, me to move the token so you can see which direction we're currently facing? Because we are, we should uh, be facing there. Um, oh, somebody that else. Way. No, that's, yes. what, that's why I, I tried <coughs> to. Uh, <laughs> so we we essentially need to turn around. Yeah, that's what that's what that's what I'm aiming for. <laughs> um. So, if I go this way, is it now technically facing that way? Or? You can change it to face that way if you want. Okay. Or you can just keep going straight ahead. Uh, um, I've moved two now. 
So you have two hexes left worth of movement. Okay. <laughs> bum, bum. Um, um, am I pointed in the right direction or what I need to turn again? Uh, you would probably at this point in time need to... You're technically pointed straight up, so you would need to turn to port, effectively. So that way, yeah. That way, yeah. And what I'd need to move to do that as well. Uh, you'd need one more movement, so you'd be going uh, to there. There. Yeah. That works. All right. <laughs> so, uh, that's so glad that you're doing that. I have no depth perception. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the movement term done. So we'll actually go down. Um, tell you what, everyone roll the initiative. And we'll work it out for whoever works for what. Ah, there's my natural one of the night. Oh, boy. Good job used it now. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a sec. My computer's been strange. It's uh, okay. Where's an issue to that? I mean, it's, it's, it's so nice to see that Bucky is, is aiming for high initiative, considering he can do nothing. <laughs> you don't know. I've killed three commoners on four different planets. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, let's start with Bucky. I will throw the second morning spear javelin hook thing towards the spider ship. Throw, roll to hit. <laughs> that is a hit. Roll some damage. <laughs> To actually hit it. How, how far away is it? Well, the thing is, again, <coughs> you're throwing it, and it doesn't have with the speed you're throwing it at as a you know a barbarian, um, it doesn't have anything stopping it, so it just keeps getting faster and faster and faster. Um, while you're in sort of like sublight speeds, this is not miles anymore. This is sort of hundred feet, couple of hundred feet. I will take the science answer and roll damage. <laughs> it's as close as it needed to be uh, so basically you throw the um, spear it impacts into part of the uh, glass sort of bottom of the uh, spider you do see a crack from it it doesn't look like it's done a lot of damage but it doesn't look like it's done some damage I uh, start celebrating jumping up and down hey Connie, paid up, did you say that? Prosper <laughs> uh, um, ooh, that yeah. has quite significantly changed what my plan was um i am no i'm going to stick with my original plan because that would have been happening simultaneously so i think uh, soldier training is going to click in uh, and can i hop down and try and assist connie with the camera? uh you certainly can try um, you've not had a lot of experience working things like field blisters, crossbows, etc. Um, or catapults for that matter, which was the thing you asked. Uh, but you can come running over towards, um, put Bucky at that side because it just makes more sense. Uh, yeah, you can dive down towards it. Um, your option, you can fire the catapult and Connie can assist you or you can assist Connie to the catapult. What would you like to do? You know what, stuff it. I'll try and fire it. That can only go terribly. Um, how do I do that? Well, for the moment, that's just the declared intent. Okay. Well, the only reason I was throwing Bucky is because Bucky was, you know, completely operating independent of the ship. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's that's so, Connie, you're next. Are you wanting to um, carry on trying to fire this, or do you have anything else you want to attempt? Connie will quite happily assist Prosper, considering she failed miserably last time. She is not used to, you know, when she has a soldier background, she's not used to having to fire catapults on the back line. She's normally on the front line with a sword. That's entirely reasonable and fair. So, uh, you're going to assist in firing the catapult, which will give that next shot advantage. Uh, Serenity. Uh, aiming, firing. Aiming, firing. All right. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-bring up the Ebon Heart. We'll place it on to Serenity. We'll place it on to Prosper, since he's the one firing. Um, Serenity, you will fire second. Prosper, you will fire first. Roll down until you get to fire Manganel and fire it. At advantage. 
Come on, Prosper. Come on, Prosper. needs to find it. <laughs> <laughs> right. All the way down, and then if you hover over ranged weapon attack, plus five to hit, and then double click it, and then double click it again. Ah ha ha! So roll again. Roll again. Sweet. Wow! <laughs> the catapult does fire. However, you're not quite used to a space. B, how any part of this seems to work. So when it releases, it does launch in a straight line, like an almost torpedo. Um, but you, the spider is mobile, and you haven't quite. You're not quite got lag shooting yet. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, to trace your target. Um, <laughs> serenity, fire at will. Fire at will. Um, Not firing at will. Oh. Again, you're you're half tracing where the catapult's going. You see the flash first, and then sort of aim in the same direction. But both of them just careen past the spider, jinking to one side, its legs spreading out. Nah. So now it's the death spider, <laughs> who in this situation uh. is going to. <laughs> I don't like it when you chuckle like that. <laughs> oh, <it's, laughs> you think that's bad? You wait to see what it's about to do. So you see it sort of, sort of arrest in space a little. The um, the silk um, sail covering it for a moment before you just see the shimmer, and it vanishes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Peanut's face doesn't movement. shift, but her eyebrow twitches. <laughs> uh, Peanut, I would like you to make me an investigation check. No, perception. Oh, really? A perception. Not investigation. Investigate. <laughs> you have no clue where this thing is. Yep, you that eyebrow is You do know it has kind of engaged some sort of camouflage. How it was a good campaign, guys. Campaign, guys. Yeah, really we did really, really well. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Peanut's just uh, now corporeally standing near the catapult, kind of in the middle of the ship, just eyebrow twitching, just <laughs> like... Uh, it's a completely brand new situation. She's tried to take charge. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't know what to do now. <laughs> okay. Um, <coughs> would you like to make your moves, please, Peanut? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, we're going to be moving a little bit faster. Because because Peanut is concerned. <laughs> um, oh, brain, which direction is it? While is this it... is going on, I'm going to give you the three to... Now you've experimented a bit with the moving, I'm going to give you the other setting as well. You basically have the half speed to have better move, maneuverability. You have your normal speed where it's two squares and then moving like that. Or you do have the option of full sail, not turning, doubling your movement. Right. <laughs> um, my, my, let me think. How many hexes is it currently? Just normal speed. Uh, so every hex effectively counts for, for five feet in this. So One, two, three, four, five, six. You seven. currently can move, you currently can move nine, nine hexes. Okay. With the ability to change your course every two. Mm. I couldn't turn and then do the thing. Like, turn and then go mega fast. No, it will take... Basically, yeah. all this happens in the same sort of round as it would for a normal action. So while it looks like it's six seconds, it's basically six tactical seconds. So you are moving at that speed, yeah. and then it'll take your next action to unfill the yeah, same. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So one, two, three, four. <laughs> one thing I should probably note as well... Um, Mm -hmm. You can't go from full sail to quarter sail. You, you basically got to go through the stages. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm going at normal speed now, if that's okay. Yep, that's fine. Uh, I've turned up here. <laughs> and then turning. Okay. To go is that way, right? Yeah, that can uh, work. To there. That was nine. Okay, that's your full movement. <laughs> What's everyone else doing? <laughs> we'll start with <laughs> off of the initiative tracker, uh, Bucky. What are we doing? I will throw my third. <laughs> what are you throwing it at? At, at? at the last place I saw the ship. Okay, I'm gonna let, let's play Minesweeper, shall we, kids? I'm going to give you access to a token. I want to see um, where you throw it. Uh, give me a second. Let me just uh, unscramble things. Da -da -da. Arrange tokens. I'm going to give you a little sword token. <laughs> so, given the uh, six hexes around, I want you to throw that to pick a direction it's going in. That way. You're going to throw it that way. Roll to hit. I'm convinced. <laughs> oh, it's an asteroid really well. Okay. Um, so you throw it in that direction. Cool. Next turn. <laughs> Prosper, what are you doing? Uh, oh. Oh, oh, can oh. I ready the catapult but like hold my action? You want to hold it for when it appears. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, what I can say is, yes, you ratchet it down. It lights up the same blue ball. Uh, you're going to wait until it appears and then fire. What I will say is you will get a perception check on a difficulty. If when it appears you manage to get your successful perception check, you can fire. Failing that, you didn't see it. Okay, fair enough. Okay, uh, next in line is Connie. <coughs> okay. Um, quick question, DM. Did, I'm yes. presuming we did not get a short rest or a long rest after we had the last battle times. You, you know what? <coughs> I will say you managed a short rest. Yay. Yay. So there's at least an hour's rest. worth of gubbins going on. Okay. Um, because Connie is kind of like looking around going, there's not much I can do, but I'm still bleeding from where that spider got me and that beholder got me and everything else got me. Okay, so, then I will allow you at this point in time to roll as many of your hit dice of the three as you like to heal. Now, it's on the main page underneath wounds. You will see there is a three, it's like a D10. Just click that as many times as you want to use it. Okay, bear with, bear with. Uh, is that something all of us can do, even that people is someone, who are controlling shit? That is something everyone can do if they want to, yes. Okay, sorry, where was it, where was it at? Uh, main, pe main tab, front page of your character sheet, down mm -hmm. the bottom, underneath that big red 16 you have on wounds. Yep. There's a 3d10. Just click that d10 as many times as you want to use it. Uh, Bucky, you were you were not wounded from the last one. <laughs> you managed to have healed yourself beyond healing. I want to use it twice, but I don't know how whether Just, that's actually rolled it twice or not. It has not rolled it at all yet. No, it rolled it once. Now it has. Now it has. Oh, okay. So that has healed you for eight. <coughs> That's healed you for six. You have Yay! one. Yay! That's okay. I will. I will live with one hit point. <laughs> yeah. I still have no key. <laughs> okay. So that's going to basically be your round. We'll say is just making yourself feel a little better for that. Yes. Mhm. Mm okay. Uh, Serenity. Uh, Serenity is holding on to the ballista, and basically she is searching the area to try and see if she can see any sort of hint 
of where the spider ship has gone. Like if she can see any sort of rippling in the uh, space, that might suggest the cloaking mechanism. Uh, in that case, what I will say is same deal. Uh, when it makes a reappearance, you're allowed a, pro a perception check. If you pass the DCI set, you can take a shot at it. Yep. Failing that, you will have missed. Yep, yep, yep. On that note, it is the Death Spider's turn. Bloody Death Who... Spider. He who has turned out is right in front of us. <laughs> we should be that. Unfortunately, I can't work out if that would be lucky or not. Oh, no! <sighs> Right behind. So, unfortunately, uh, Serenity, you actually do not have arc or angle no. to side. Oh. However, Prosper, uh, make me a perception check. Get him. Get him. Oh dear. Get him. Get him. Get him. Uh, do 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 do. do. <gasps> that is successful. That it. Did, was yeah. it? 15 was the target I was aiming for. Yeah. Uh, can throw to hit. Bear with me right. a second. I'll get you the Ebon Heart if you've not already got it up. No, I got it. I'm I'm starting to work out where I'm hiding my 1,200 bits of stuff. Um... <laughs> Welcome to Fancy Grounds. <laughs> That's a direct hit. Will you roll that 5d10 bludgeoning damage for it? <gasps> There is a massive blast as this almost torpedo-like blue bolt smashes into one of the front um, arms, one of the raised ones. You see it sort of break and shear <laughs> away, part of the um, sail now disrupting and falling off. It's not able to cloak again. <gasps> he does give, like, a small sort of shout of, like, just joy, like, ah <laughs> <laughs> Just from the ballista, just Serenity just shouts down, Good job! You hit it! <laughs> okay. You did um, the thing! It is going to take its shot, however, in almost a retaliatory strike. Uh, it's going to fire its own mangonel back. Perish. It hits. Oh, oh no. And smashes for a further 36 point of damage. You can yeah. now feel the sort of burning sensation at the back of uh, the small of your back, Peanut, as you've basically been cracked effectively across <laughs> the spinal column. Um, there is a portion of the uh, spell jammer drive that looks like it's basically now showing. There's no longer a hole back there. There is some internals that look like they're made out of piping and some level of um, like blue arcane uh, symbols and lights. Uh, Peanut kind of just like sits down on the floor. It's like, ah, ha, 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 ha. Um, you okay over there, there Peanut? Really Peanut? Hey, I think, <laughs> I think so. Take it in, <laughs> You get the impression that if they are trying to disable you. Mm. Well, mm. that's uh, Peter, your movement. Mm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, All of the turning. <laughs> lots and lots of the turning. Full sail, half sail, uh, quarter sail. I'm working that one out. Uh, let's say you're going to need one. Could go half sail. No, yeah, could go half sail. Definitely not full sail. <laughs> Straight to asteroids. I mean, I, I'm very good at manoeuvring, but... <laughs> you're going to need at least two turns, I think. Yeah. Um... So that we're facing straight on. So you should be all right on half sail. Mm. Okay. So over here, yes. Mm -hmm. And then over here. That's yeah. Four. Then over here. Yeah. That's six. And then. Over here. No, not there. No, not there. Here. <laughs> that's eight. Uh, that's 
the right uh, direction, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. You are cause... pointed straight up. Yep. yep. Mm. Yeah. That gets us in the corn. I'm good. I, can I do anything? I know I've just manoeuvred, but can I do anything else with this shit? Make me an arcana check. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. You only did a 10. You are plugged into it. Um, I would put <laughs> your notes under the Ebon Heart. Where are you? Uh, Possibly the upgrades section. Uh, I don't have the Ebon Heart up. Allow me. Ah, uh, I have it. <laughs> okay, so... <sighs> Upgrade. Can you Stop. share it with multiple people, Edgy? Uh, it should actually be fully shared, but if not... So in, yeah, yeah. in the upgrades, you should have your ebon dark figurehead and the arcade artillery. Uh, Ooh. Uh, Pinky Hitting the dark long range with a bow and arrow drawn, the ship can activate this item to generate a pulse of energy towards the arrowhead, firing a sphere of annihilation in a straight line to a range of 400 feet before vanishing. Once used, this ability cannot be fired again for 24 hours. Basically, fire a thing. But it also uh, damages the spell, spell jammer, yeah. which mm -hmm. is getting damaged. Um, no, no, no. The spell jammer currently is you. Yeah. You yeah. Take that damage. I'm... <laughs> Go on, Peter. You've got this. So you, could got... take, you could take a maximum of 16 uh, psychic damage if, if you did that. I'd mean I'd still be up, but I wouldn't be doing well. Mm. That's okay. Um, you have someone who can fix that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's the rogue. It's definitely the rogue. It's definitely it's, <laughs> yeah. lucky. It's the rogue. <laughs> Um, he's, not a, he's not a rogue. He's a he's a he's a cleric, right? Can, oh, yeah, can, I, try, can I try that figurehead thing, or have I already done too much movement? Uh, for no, 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 no. You can use that as an action. It's literally the only one you can use while you are. Now, bear with me a second while I set up the giggles of this. Oh no! Don't uh, see giggles. So that suggests this isn't going to go well. <laughs> the this not well. No. The entire of the ship for a moment, just seems to dim ever so slightly. The arcane um, ballista seems to almost fluctuate with power, like it's losing it more than gaining it. The catapult loses power for a second as there is this weird black sort of lightning that creeps from the back end of the ship all the way to the front. Uh, it rakes across what is basically a sort of ranger-like figurehead with a pulled bow and arrow the very tip of the arrow carved out of some level of obsidian. The lightning hits the figure, spirals up it before hitting the very center, and then launches what looks like a two-foot diameter black sphere out, directly ahead. For reference of those who do not know what a sphere of annihilation is, the sphere of annihilation is a stable black hole and obliterates all matter it passes through <laughs> and all matter that passes through it. So, if you're within 60 feet of an uncontrolled sphere, which is roughly uh, about where that A comes in. Oh, by the way, that asteroid is gone. Um, you will take 4d10 force damage. And, uh, yeah, well, that's, that death spider's taking 4d10 force damage to open with, shall we say. So, bear with me a second. And I will roll that up for you. It's nice knowing you, Will. Uh, the thing is, it's um, firing away from you. It doesn't get to a stage where it's um, uncontrolled until it is away from you, which is mm. why it's an effective weapon. Um, so the you can see the front of this spider start to sort of crinkle and crumple. Um, the other leg now sort of tearing away and being pulled into this sphere, uh, it starts to contract, contract, contract before a sudden outward explosion. It then takes an additional 10d10 force damage. Oh I hope we never encounter this again. <laughs> That's a lot of dice. <laughs> so the death spider... Um, just seems to scatter into silver pieces. 
just <laughs> distancing itself across the stars. The sphere disappearing moments later. I'll uh, remove that, shall I? I'll, I'll, I'll do the cleanup. Well, heck. Oh, boy. Well, that was. Wow. Let's see how uh, Peanut's doing. I was going to say, I need that damage. damage. Peanut, which comes in at an almighty 12. Oh. That's okay. Ah. We got you. That's fine. And the entire power to the ship shuts down. <laughs> Are we all about to suffocate in space? No. Oh, no. The no. gravity plane and the air envelope are on different sort of systems. Effectively. They are just a thing that the actual spell jamming helm does. However, Peanut's little sort of um, body, the one who's walking around and sort of surveying the area, blinks out of existence. The dead one. Yeah, that one. The dead one. And you are ejected out of the seat, Peanut. <laughs> <laughs> where did Peanut go? Where's Peanut? Uh, Connie just like sprints where did back up to where she knows the captain's quarters were. I will follow you because you seem to know where you're going. And <laughs> I shout out overboard like, Peanut! In case she's fallen overboard. So, Connie comes steaming up the stairs <laughs> to where the uh, sort of sphere effectively is. Um, you can see it slowly start to dissipate away, leaving just the chair. Um, and on the floor, unconscious, but not di dying unconscious, is Peanut. The psychic feedback being a little much for a first-timer. <laughs> oh, boy. As soon as I find <coughs> my character sheet, I will help you. But it has been eaten by fantasy grounds. <laughs> <laughs> click on your paw. Mm, delicious. But if you... Um... Right, also, the, star the spear field to minimize, moves two, feet, two hexes to the left <laughs> and will continue to do so forever. Oh, is it going in that direction? Yeah. 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 It was a distraction. Uh, Serenity is going to come down from the uh, forecastle and she's going to go and um, look for the source of the ship's power so she can go and investigate and see if she can get it up and running okay so you're heading down into the hold yes yeah pretty much okay the hold itself uh looks particularly um wrecked and ruined at the moment the back end uh, as you sort of come down and basically open up the very back of the doors looks like it's basically open to space yeah. um doesn't make any difference because of the energy, the sort of um, air pocket that surrounds the actual ship. Uh, you're not going to like suddenly get decompressed, um, but you can see as you sort of lean over to look down bits of sort of piping and otherwise. You currently look like you have the ability to move normally. You definitely, according to what um, Peanut says, do not have the spell jamming drive, and you have no idea how to fix that. Because you do not know what the hell it is down there. Mm. Okay. Is there any way for <laughs> Serenity to start fixing up the damage she can fix up? Um, I mean, there's a lot of uh, crates down here. You could probably break the boards off and start fixing the boards. Yep. Uh, there's bits of there's barrels with tar in as well down here. Obviously, for some level of repairs. But this is barely patchwork that you can do. And if you're being honest, you're going to need to hit a dry dock. Yeah. At least you would need to hear dry dock where you want to see. Yeah. Okay, for the for the time being though, Saren is gonna patch up the ship as best she can. Okay. You start going and sort of slapping um putting basically a band-aid on the massive gouting wound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um okay, so back up on the quarter deck. Uh Prosper, you're dealing with peanuts, I assume. Yes. What you're doing. Yeah. Okay, what would you like to do? And um, I am going to, because you said she was unconscious, but not like zero hit points unconscious. She was just yeah. like dazed and confused. Yes. Um, so I am going to, I am going to cast, what? Someone whispered something. Wasn't me. Anyway, I'm going to use <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, and I am like 
How completely wrecked does she look? Uh, she looks physically fine. It's the... Uh, if there was the ability to have smoke coming out of your ears without looking like there was an issue, there'd be smoke coming out of her ears. Okay. Um, so what I'll probably do then is... Do, 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 do. Um, I'm just trying to work out how... I will... I will, I will be very generous, and I will cast Cure Wounds as a second level for you. Damn. All right. Um, put, uh, open up the Cure Wounds box and just push the button twice for me. Can do. He I've says. already targeted for you. Thank you. <laughs> Don't give him too much to try and deal with. <laughs> so hit it twice. There you go. So you managed a total of nine hit points. Um, Peanut, you can basically feel someone's hands on either side of your head and there's this warm, pulsing, healing light coming into your skull. Um, you start to slowly come round. Bucky, what are you doing during all this? Am I up on the uh, thingy by myself? You are currently on the uh, main deck by yourself. You could, you're still sort of half watching what's left of that spider just drift away. You can just about see small... Uh, life forms, at least you think they are, that are kind of like spiraling through space as well. I sort of look around the deck, realise nobody's there. Uh, Peter, Connie. Yeah. If you look up, the, look, look up the stairs, you can up. see Prosper up there. Oh, I go up there. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm just coming around. <laughs> up into what's basically part of the quarter deck. I'll just move Connie to there. Move everyone around a little bit. So you'll basically get to the top of the stairs and you can see Peanut on the floor being slowly healed. Connie, who sort of stood there looking down, and Prosper being the one who's doing the actual healing. <laughs> so, how are you all doing? Uh, I slowly. Everyone would be fine. <laughs> I slowly open my eyes and look up at the, the one that's healing me. Like, ah, thanks. Oh. Mm. Is it gone? Is it gone? <laughs> it is gone. It is very, it very, gone. Gone. very, very gone. Definitely. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it worked. Oh. You're not dead anymore, Pino. I was never dead, Bucky. I always said I wasn't dead. <laughs> That's what ghosts would say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was busy controlling this ship up here the whole time. <laughs> you were controlling the ship. Yes. Oh, yes. How else do you yeah. think it would have moved? Bucky, you can see the chair that seemingly is controlling the, that she has used to control the ship. It's beautiful, encased in jewels, has two sort of hand grips to basically hold on to. Um, but it does look like there's a little bit of sort of spattering of blood across the back of it. You sat in that chair. Mm hmm. Well, wow. yeah, it's uh, could have done with turning a bit faster. You could have done with doing anything. You think spears are gonna work in wherever we are? I hit a planet and I hit the ship, that's not bad. And I'm pretty sure that third one will hit something eventually. The spear moves two feet. <laughs> two feet. <laughs> Actually, no, three. Definitely it's had time to speed up. Seagull that's going to get killed. <laughs> it's all fun in games until you find out, like, 20 sessions down the line, that that spear <laughs> comes back to haunt us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't give him ideas. A, Your actions have ass. consequences. Um, so I slowly get up and I'm kind of looking over the edge of the ship, like, are we still moving or? The We're ship is not barely anymore. drifting forward. It's not um, got any sort of forward momentum. Okay, do we okay. need to be driving this thing again then? Well, there's no, there's nothing coming at us now, is there? Not as far as I'm aware. I don't know how this works. <laughs> I don't know how it works either. Serenity! <laughs> where, where? Where is she? You can actually, considering the hole in the bottom of the ship, you can actually hear from the quarter deck them yelling down Serenity. So this is a massive hole that they're talking through. Hello. 
<laughs> just gonna like as I'm hammering away, just hammering away. Just... Hello. Hello. <laughs> you can hear it <laughs> echoing up. <laughs> Hello? Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Yes. 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 I'm fixing the ship. Oh. Oh. Good. Uh, Is she a ghost? No. Not a ghost. <laughs> Spooky voice. I'll, uh, I'll just put her off into the middle of the deck. Okay, into the main deck, yeah? Uh, yeah. Okay, you take a wander down just into the main deck, in and amongst near where the catapult is. Um, you see the set of stairs that lead down, a set of doors at the very front that um, you haven't explored yet, but having unreliable information is somewhere to sleep. There's the captain's quarters um, at the back, as well as what is a uh, officer's uh, mess room, effectively. Just potter around, checking stuff out, getting accustomed to our new home as we're not going anywhere. <laughs> okay, um, you just wander about. It's 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 a fine <laughs> ship, were it not for some of the goddamn holes in it. <laughs> What's everyone doing up on the quarter deck then, while uh, Bucky goes on a wander? Um, I am asking the lovely tea thing. What was your name? <laughs> <laughs> we got a bit distracted. Prosper. 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 Yes. Okay, I'm Peanut. Uh, I motion towards Connie. Connie. We'll get it right one day. Uh, we'll get it right one day. <laughs> one day. Um, how did you end up in a on a, in a cage on here? Do you know? I would love to know. Okay. <laughs> Last I guess I knew, I was in the middle of the forest. Uh, we were checking out some undead. Uh, then the big long things with all the legs. Uh, one of them mm. shot, uh, killed the rest of the party um, and charmed another one. And then I had to kill him. And then a massive thing arrived. Uh, and then I was in a cage on the right up on the thing in the stars. And you can see that as he starts to get to that point, he's starting to kind of freak out a little bit, having <laughs> quite what the situation is, and probably like sits down beside you. Uh, uh, <laughs> Peanut sits next to Frosty, the same distant look in her eyes. <laughs> now that she's had a moment to recalculate of, oh yeah. Well, he's trying to get on the ship. It is polite to ask, I guess. <laughs> we um, had some lovely encounters with some lovely creatures that um, we were trying to get away from, and we ended up on here, and we have no idea how to sell this thing. Yeah, you did um, well from what I could see. Thank you. Uh huh. Uh yeah. We uh, as far as I'm aware, none of us know how we got to where we were either. It just kind of <laughs> stuff happened, and then we all were in a cell, and then we got out of there, and now we're here. <laughs> now I don't know where we are. Also, on chult. On what? On chult. 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 Yes, the um, island. Uh, no. 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 I've not heard of that place before. <coughs> he just kind of gives you like a confused like, but, but how? how? Have you not heard? Like it's on. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's somebody saying. Tesco. You've never heard of Tesco. What? <laughs> Pretty much the same thing. So. <laughs> um, uh, so where did they find you? I'm presuming that you also had a similar experience. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I was just. I was just in my hometown. Um, I just finished investigating for the day, 
I finally finished up on this ridiculous case. I was in the bar, and then this um, this singer came in and started singing on the stage, and it it was really eerie. Like it was nice, but it's not my kind of music. Um, it was very odd. And then everyone in the in the tavern in the bar just started freezing in place. Um, it was. It was it was very disconcerting. I think is the right term. Um, I somehow managed to, to to not do that. I kind of just centered myself, and I wasn't frozen. Um, and then a lot of the spidery, eely things that I think you mentioned as well. Um, they one of them appeared behind the bar, and I killed it um, <laughs> somehow. And then three more of them appeared, and then I don't quite remember anything uh, pa pa past that. I just woke up in the cell, and that was about it. Um, yeah. Um, I remember uh, um, part of the case was uh, there was a guy, he wasn't acting like himself. Um, he didn't understand his situation fully, and he remembered hearing a dissonant, discordant violins. And then when uh, this singer came in, I remember the music had a, a little bit of discordant violins. And then when we were in the um, when we were in the um, cell place, wherever it was, there were discordant violins. I went into a room or went near a room, and it was just violins. And everyone thought I was insane, and probably still thinks I'm insane. But no, I heard them. I heard them as well. See, uh, I have no idea what it means, but yeah. Um, me neither. There were no violins in where I was, or well, maybe I, after I, I was I hit, possibly, but not. I don't know if it's a, a it's the right term, mutually exclusive thing, but um, yeah, it's just odd. I don't under, fully understand. This isn't my area of expertise. The supernatural usually goes to to, to other people. Um, yeah, we are in the stars on a floating boat. I've, it's all yeah. up for grabs now, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, Just for reference, not... everyone can hear this conversation. The vacuum of space yeah. is incredibly silent. And despite um, the distance between the quarter deck and the hold, uh, there are enough holes in here that everyone is able to hear this. <laughs> so this entire conversation, no matter where you're on the ship, perfectly viable to join in or otherwise. Um, so none of you are from Ravnica, then? Where no? is, is that on the no. mainland? I've never been. No, it's a, it's a planet. It's a place. It's where I'm from. None no, of you are. No, I'm from, from Eberron. Eber Eberron. Eberron. Where is Eberron? <laughs> well, I don't know in relation to where you're from, but it's where <laughs> I'm from. <laughs> Do we want Good to, to not have this conversation across the entire body of the ship? <laughs> Would you like the ship to not have holes in it? Where are you? And at this point, he's like up and like still shouting. <laughs> Like, so that moment, like, you're coming down, your mom's like, dinner's ready! And you're like, yeah! <laughs> Just, like, following through. <laughs> but still yelling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so I'll head to... Are you kind of the equivalent of where you're showing on the map? Or... No, I'm, I'm in the hold. It, it won't let me move my token. Apologies, allow me to handle that for you. Watch me in the hold, damn it. <laughs> it's where I belong. <laughs> well, now in the hold. Excellent. Bucky, on the other hand, has spent some time basically. Are you just rifling through in and around those beds, or are you just checking the beds themselves? Uh, column A, column B. <laughs> so you managed to gather approximately, just as you're rooting through, um, 24 gold pieces. Basically, it looks like there are some levels of small wooden lockers in the beds. You get about 24 gold pieces and what looks like a variety of sort of trinkets and knickknacks and um, other things. You do come across, really weirdly, um, what looks like a, um, a little doll. 
Um, it um, looks like it's a um, well-dressed gentleman, um, sort of waistcoated, um, slicked black hair. Uh, he has a very weird sort of distant look on his face. And at the back, you can see there is a tag that reads, Ain't no fun, ain't no blitzk. Ain't no fun, ain't no what? Blinsky. Blinsky. That's the one. Uh, I tossed the doll. Okay, you, over your shoulder, just over past, shoulder. Uh, lands yeah. on one side. You hear a <laughs> from it. Yep, I turn around. It's just a doll. I stare at the doll. That I, is uh, terrifying. <laughs> really hard. It just, yeah. Nothing, nothing happens. I stand on it. Makes no sound. Cool. Oh, must be everything. Pocket the gold. Keep rifling. Open those little wooden lockers. The second you turn your back to it, there's the sound of whispering. <laughs> turn around. Peanut, is that you being a ghost again? <laughs> can, I, can I hear this? Um, he's not quiet, yes. <laughs> What are you on about? That's a bit far away. Who's whispering? That waving my arms about. Whispering. Look at the doll again. Nothing. <laughs> Don't like this in here. Um, Peter, is anyone else dead on here? <laughs> can I start following the sound of his voice to find out where Bucky is? Yeah, you could start down um, from the quarter deck down to the main deck. Uh, and you can see that the doors uh, to the area that you remember having the beds in is just open slightly. Uh, okay. You can also hear us. You can hear a slight whispering as well. Although between the pair of you, it's now starting to sound musical, almost like some sort of nursery rhyme. Uh, what? But what is that, Bucky? Have you got a music box? Wincy, wincy spider. I think we have all had enough of spiders. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely not in Suwinsi, though. Um, um, Start looking under all the beds. There is nothing right. coming specifically from uh, any other thing under the beds, around the beds. I'll pick the doll up and look at it. You can now can hear the whisp. Now you're holding the doll, you can hear the whispering sort of nursery rhyme. Uh, uh, I'm poking my nose in the door. What is that? What is that? What are you holding? Um, this is Bliskin. 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 Nice. Ah, what it says on his back. On the shoulder back at the doll. It reads ah. on the back of the doll. Ah. Is no fun. Is no Blinsky. Is no fun. Is no Blinsky. What? <laughs> Did you bring this with you, Bucky? Is this is this your little toy? It, I think about it. No, it's not mine. Okay. <laughs> um, but it is talking to me. Are you talking to me? And I look at it again. Doesn't make any reaction in the slightest. I bite it. Um, you bite onto it. It's it's mostly wood. Uh, was quite well painted until you've basically your teeth have dug into it. Where you've sort of scratched, it's left behind a red mark, almost blood like. Um, <coughs> weird, uh, some weird stuff going on. Here, Peanut. I think this little dude is a little dude. Um. Okay, I can hear the whispering sound stuff. You yes. Can, yes. It. It's not. Despite the fact it's creepy as all hell because it's a nursery rhyme, it's it's kind of soothing. Hmm. What are the words of the nursery rhyme? Um, there's no specific... It, it's weird. It's not like it does actually have a specific set of lyrics. It's more just... Mother's it, Hub. It's ca yeah. It's kind of like the sort of thing that you would have, uh, something would sing to you as a child, or more specifically, what you'd hear as a child. It's all just pleasant noises, but it's very musical and carries a sort of kind of tune. Is it mm. Definitely focused on G.I. Joe. 
It's definitely, while you're holding it, it is clearly coming from this doll. Okay. I don't know, Peanut. This is above my pay grade. Although I have made 18 gold. I mean, good for you, I guess. Um, you, you didn't take that from any of us, did you? No, no, just uh, whoever had this ship before. Right? <coughs> I take a moment kind of considering this, like... Do, Am do I okay have, with this? Do you have 18 gold on you, Peter? Sorry? Sorry? Do you have 18 gold on you? Um, probably not. <laughs> no. <laughs> I just, I don't know what anyone else has. Um, it's just, yeah. Uh, I take a moment to consider whether or not I'm okay with it, but then I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, do I recognize the doll at all i know i don't really look into supernatural things but have i ever seen anything like it before it's just a well-dressed gentleman with slick black hair mm -hmm. wait a uh, sort of a waistcoat on um roll me an insight check insight so i'd probably say on a nine no <laughs> Shock horror. Well, it's, just, it's it's almost like it's a feminine voice that's coming from the doll, but it's a male figure, and it is not um, any, like anything you've seen. Wow. Doesn't seem malign, if that's any here in no. the picture. No. Yeah. Um... Why don't uh, we see if anyone else knows where that might have come from? Where did you find it? Where did you find it, Bucky? Uh, in that pile of clothes over there. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um. <laughs> Am I bringing this with us? Sure. I don't think it's doing us any harm. Uh, just don't know what it is. Uh. I just tie it to my kilt, like hero belt on the top of the kilt. Great. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Bucky, um, would you do me a favor and just remind me about that doll? I'd probably say after what's approximately an hour. As in? As in, basically, when I change the scene, if I've not reminded you about the doll, remind me about the doll. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> So, anyway, anyway, anyway. Uh, you head back up to the quarter deck with everyone. Are you going with as well, Bucky? Yeah, I'll put it on. Okay. Um, Serenity, you are having very little luck fixing this goddamn thing. Uh, it's, it's easy to do the framework, but you're going to basically have to break down every box on this ship to patch that hole. And even then, it isn't it's literally going to create the shell again multiple days from now, and it's not enough to fix anything that's down below. But you have kind of made it a little more airtight in other places, as opposed to this one massive great back hole. Well, it's better than nothing. True facts. Um, that case, I'm gonna have. So you take you a little bit, but you get back up there. Yeah. Uh, Hello. Uh, Connie and Prosper, what have you been doing while this has been going on? Connie's. Can Connie have a little look at the chair that you basically sit in to control the ship? Yes. Yes, you can. Uh, it is particularly uh, ornate. Gilded, wooded in places with a cushion seat. Uh, its backrest is black velvet sewn with silver bars. Um, however, all the way down, other than that, it's encrusted with gemstones. And as pointed out on both handle, on both hands, effectively, there is a place to grip onto. Okay. Um, because she knows that obviously the ship has been damaged, and she knows that Peanut essentially got thrown out the chair. Can she try? sitting in the chair and see if she can like try and help the ship at all okay you sit down in the chair 
and there is this w set of words that pass through your head. Faith jammer activated. <laughs> Would you like to spend any spell slots? I have no idea how this works, but sure. <laughs> Also, for reference. Uh, what? That's the uh, astral form that appears. What? I see nothing. Oh, oh okay. It's on the quarter deck. Oh, the token. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, are, we, are we are we back on the quarter deck now? Uh, yeah. Yes. By this point in time, you didn't have very far to walk, so uh, Bucky and Peanut will have just come up at the point in time where you can see a um, the the, um, the dome has resurrounded. There's like a um, almost like a shell that's taken place over the uh, part of the quarter deck. This one looks a little more armoured than perhaps um, Peanuts was. Uh, definitely has a slight shine to it in places. And a few seconds later, you see sort of half strolling around the corner, a very spectral looking con uh, Connie. Oh no, they've killed Connie. <laughs> I'm not dead. I, I don't think it does kill Connie. I think we are okay. Uh, Prosper, do you want to be inside or outside of that bubble when it falls? Uh, I would like to be outside the bubble. <laughs> Excellent. So we'll put you behind Spectral Connie. <laughs> ah, that's what it looks like. That's freaky. <laughs> this is weird. I just tried to help the ship. I was like, okay, let's see if we can do something, right? What are you mm. wanting to do to help the ship? Imagine for a second that you have your, uh, your character sheet and your mm -hmm. abilities. What mm -hmm. would you want to use to affect the ship? She would want to, like, essentially try and heal the ship, so she'd want to kind of lay on hands a little bit. How much lay on hands do you have? How much do I have left? Mm -hmm. That's my question. Let's have a look. Did I use some last time? I feel like I did. I did. I used ten last time, so I have five left. All right. Are you using that five? Sure. Okay, you channel um, your lay on hands energy into the closest thing you can, which is supposedly the the chair and possibly yourself. Um, everyone around can hear a slow creaking, and as you basically get your back to uh, the hole as you're walking out, Serenity, you see a couple of planks just sort of tink, 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 tink into place. Oh. So the ship will heal five hit points. Okay. Good to know. Connie's just kind of like, is that, is that did something? Everyone else heard the sort of straining sound of uh, things moving and the ship kind of responding to the healing. Wow. Nice job. That is incredible for a dead person. You just healed the ship. I mean, that's what I was trying to do. Trying to do. Right. I thought you were some sort of a fighter type. Well played. I'm impressed. <coughs> I'm a little multi-skilled, shall we say. Ah, like a rogue. <laughs> yeah, like you and your rogue abilities. <laughs> Somehow, Your I do not think that is quite correct. Okay. <laughs> With our uh, new applicant to the chair, I'm going to call probably for a 10 minute break there since it's like quarter to 10. Three, two, one. You're back in the room. All right then. Uh, everyone is all fed, uh, watered, and otherwise. So we'll, uh, we'll get back into things. So, where did we leave off, Dungeon Master? I believe you were all on the quarter deck, mildly stranded in space because a spider had ripped your engines out. Um, also, the spear in this amount of time has moved that many hexes it has left the map. <laughs> so, I can't wait for the repercussions of that. Okay. Level 20, dead. 
Serenity, about this point in time, you have come from the main deck up to where the quarter deck is. You can now see the sort of armoured shell that is protecting the spell jammer. Uh, looking at it, the armour does kind of remind you of what you've seen so far on uh, Connie's kit, effectively. Um, directly across from you, there is Peanut and Bucky, who are also kind of looking at now a spectral version of Connie. Uh, and up until very recently... Uh, there was the sound of straining boards as the ship was slowly repairing itself. What does everyone want to do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna tap the uh, the shell. Dink, dink, dink. It feels metallic, uh, but it does feel hollow. Oh, this is interesting. What were you saying, Bucky, okay, from the other side? <coughs> what, what, sorry? You were saying something uh, from the other side. Are you sure? Are you sure? She's not dead, but we'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not dead. I'm not dead. <laughs> what, one of you was lying to me. <sighs> so. Can we, can okay. we pass through it? Okay. Uh, you can certainly try. Serenity tries and, and pass through it. it. Um, okay. Serenity, you place your hand and put some actual force behind it, but yeah, after a moment's kind of like pushing into snow almost, um, you pass through to the other side. It's a little chilly in here, but that's mostly due again to the metallic kind of armor feel of everything and the cold vacuum of merciless space. Hmm. Tell me that. <coughs> uh, you can see a unconscious Coney on the um, chair. Can I do an arcana check on the chair, please? You can certainly try. Fabulous. Can I also, whilst I do that, can I use my expertise? In... Bardic expertise, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you're looking uh, <laughs> third level choose two. You you have already chosen those two. They oh, are doubled. Oh, is that be. my performance and persuasion? Uh, yes. Oh no, yes, yes. Now they are. Now they're doubled. Right. Yeah, it wasn't calculated properly. Yeah. Never okay. mind. Okay, I'll just do my I'll kind of check them. Roll your arcana check. I I know nothing. I'm I'm. It's too... it's a pretty chair. It's a pretty chair. It's yeah. a very pretty chair. Maybe I'll come it's... back to this when I'm not physically you know... and emotionally exhausted. You know what, Serenity? Mm. It's also magical. <gasps> I love. I love it. I just love it. I'll come back to that when I'm not emotionally and physically tired. <laughs> When you plan on having that in that this campaign, anyway, <laughs> what's everyone else doing? Um, trying to see where we're going, <laughs> looking into the vast abyss of space. You kind of feel somewhat disconnected, Peanut. You are no longer in full control of the ship, and it's, it's no, I'm... come down for your senses to not be as expansive or as as overwhelming as before. So all you're currently seeing around is little pinpricks of sort of white light mm. and rocks here, there, and everywhere. But other than that, there's nothing you can see. Connie, on the other hand, you have a full view of all the <coughs> and an extended feeling of things in and around. You can get a rough feel for where multiple different asteroids are. And again, you sort of see rocketing in front of your eyes green symbols. Um, you just want to make sure on people's languages. See if they do actually speak the thing in question. Uh, Peanut did not. Does Connie, Connie speak? Connie does not. In common. <laughs> no. This is unlikely. So um, there's you get a feel for some parts of it. You can tell that the rocks are for some reason called asteroids. Um, there's this thing referring to sort of stellar bodies out there, things like nebula or star. Star is obviously a famous a, a word you recognise, but it's referring to um, things that are all around you, some sort of... As you extend your senses out, you can get a feel that they're made up of large amounts of sort of magical gases. Um, 
other than that, other than that there's just the feeling, the feeling of, of peace. peace. There's something to be said about sitting in absolute void. Absolute void. Um, um, Connie has no idea which no way they want to go. go. So, so until they kind of decide what they're going to do, she's kind of done a little heel on the ship, but she's like, I, I, I have actual projection, whatever it is. It's kind of like, um, do we, do I need to be at the helm right now? Or does this, is this like, is this useful? Kind of directs it towards Serenity a little bit, like. I mean, if I'm going to be honest, I don't know. This is a magic ship. <laughs> you get the feeling that if you expended power, you could make the ship move. But as you're sort of probing around with these kind of questions, um, you do still feel a massive void where something should be. Um, probing into it deeper and sort of like drawing your attention to it, you just see a set of green runes appear that translates now in your mind as spell gemma drive deactivated. Oh, um, I think something's broken. Yeah, the spell jammer, isn't it? Was damaged. I should have that's, mentioned that before. That's what I'm getting as well. Um, I, I tried. I don't have much healing. I mean, do you want to try? I could try. I've not got an awful lot of healing left, but. I mean, I could try. You've all got I'm healing. <laughs> It seemed to do something, and it seems to have like got some kind of armor on it now. So I don't know whether, like, if Connie maybe tried to like purposely try to sort of maybe make the armor stronger, would that work? Using your character sheet, is there any way that you could physically make this armor stronger? Maybe uh, I don't know, a spell. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me get to that sheet. <laughs> it's too many things. Um, oh, of course. Okay. Um, yeah, go for it. She's going to cast Shield of Faith on the ship. Okay, feel free to cast it. Then. So, uh, how? Do I actually cast it again? I do you not cast it. Oh, I've got it. Little, got it. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. You got it. Okay. That I applied twice, so I'm going to remove one of those. But <laughs> you do suddenly, as you you pump this paladin-like energy into the ship itself, again, through you, um, those outside can see that armored shell around her sort of just reinforce almost, like extra spikes start appearing out of it, more, more scale. <coughs> It becomes a lot more oppressive. There are parts of the air pocket that seem to surround that seem to almost glisten and become harder to uh, penetrate by various bits of um, sort of stellar debris that seem to just be ricocheting off of it. Some bits pass through, but now nothing's passing through. Um, the um, general side of the ship itself seems to groan and almost... I think the correct way of putting it. it. It kind of bulwarks and reinforces. You can see a sort of glittering off of it, like a, a spectral shield has now appeared. That, that seemed to work. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Whoa. Wow. Nice. Okay. Um, but okay. So what are we doing? No, I mean... We can't really go anywhere at the moment. Is there any way of actually fixing the the drive? It's is that what it's called? A drive? A drive? <laughs> I don't know. Does, does Connie see any difference in terms of like the stuff scrolling across? Is there anything uh, like it's still saying the same thing? It basically, if you focus enough, you do actually sort of bring up an almost like sub menus worth of um, effects and it does uh, <laughs> mention the fact that there is a uh, shielding effect on the ship 
you recognize some of the actual symbology in the wording to be um, almost divine. It, it's You've never written down divine spells, but you imagine that so, basically there's images of your deity that sort of like flash in there. It's very kind of, um, what's the word? Uh, look, looking at it's more like a metaphor than actual writing. Okay. Um, okay, I can't read a lot of this. Um, I'm no, gonna I guess. I'm gonna guess it's probably some other kind of language. Um, what what languages do people speak? Uh, I mean, I speak common and elvish. So I also speak common and elvish. <laughs> I speak halfling and a little bit of common. A little bit common. Prosper. Inferno. 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 <laughs> I mean, you okay. chuckle, but then you kind of look over and realise, yeah, tiefling. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, right. So well, I don't know what those runes were when I saw them, so I couldn't tell you what language we would need for them. Um, I kind of recognize we would be able to try and focus the healing. Um, um, I mean, you're probably a lot more qualified to tell than I am. I'm not sure anyone is particularly um, qualified at all on this ship to do much of anything at the moment. Um, but I can try. I mean, I mean, it's worth a shot. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. So, what are you actually trying? Um. Well. Um, well. I think we probably need to swap the yeah. seat. <laughs> okay. Um. You're gonna stand up then, Connie. Get in the mecca. Get in the mecca. Yeah. Get in the mecca. <laughs> so, uh, you stand up and out, and your spectral duplicate seems to dissipate. Um. You're entering uh, into the seat, Prosper? The seat, Prosper? Yes. The, okay. the second Connie steps down, the entire bubble fades away, and all that's left is that one seat. I'm just hanging over the edge, looking out to space. Uh, it goes on for a bit. Do not fall off. <laughs> you're, you're, you're definitely getting some level of mild vertigo to it, but it's being offset by that lovely little nursery rhyme that's still going. Going. Little. Oh, I, yeah. super hate, I yeah. super hate that. I super hate that a lot. <laughs> I'll pick up the doll. Okay. Well, I'll let you deal with Prosper first. Uh, Prosper, you uh, sit down you sit and down you hear and you Faith hear Jammer. Faith activate. Jammer. Activate. Okay. Okay. Your uh, duplicate is there. Duplicate is there. Oh, hmm. yeah. Uh, I give in. <laughs> and. Is the, he able to sense? Well, I, as you're saying, like they can get a sort of sense of different areas. Is he able to kind of sense the bit that's most um, requiring of assistance? Uh, make, me, make, make me a medicine check. <laughs> I don't think I'm particularly good at this, but we'll check. Oh no, I am. <laughs> oh no, I'm not. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. Um, I have a good bonus to it, but I'm not used to medicine and ships. So, uh, first things first, first, as you sit down, the shell reappears, except this time, for those to see, it is comprised entirely of beautiful blue, green, and red feathers that just cases all around. Um, you sort of delve your brain into the ship trying to look at it like you would look at a patient you're looking to find try and find a broken leg effectively and you start getting a rough idea of bits of how some some of it works but it's still massively a case of just drop healing on it at the moment you can't focus the healing oh this is broken all the way down all the way down um okay. and i think would you have an understanding that basically what um, Connie did was she used a spell on it? Um, she used, um, used 
You would have that understanding, but you also have a distinct understanding sitting in this that your magic can be used one of two ways. You would either be able to use magic at, for an effect, or you can burn spell slots for forward momentum. Okay. Um, I think being able to have forward momentum um, <laughs> is, is probably the first and foremost. Uh, well, so... that's the thing. You can, you can move through what's effectively sublight speed that has not been damaged you can still move forward you can still turn none of that's changed okay um, it's just the the spell jamming speed that super speed you're having okay. right at the start that seems uh, broken the warp speed essentially yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I was trying to avoid Star Trek references, but bugger it, we're here now. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I think what I'll try and do then is... Let's see. Oh, sorry if that was me. Interference. Me, your boy. Okay, um, I will try our first level uh, Kyojins on the ship. Okay. Um, you um, instinctively kind of focus your energies in onto yourself to focus it out through the, uh, out through the ship. Uh, so the very first thing is you are not damaged. That is fine. Yeah. You can target... You're currently targeting the ship. Please feel free to uh, do as you will. Oh, wow, it's the night for twos, isn't it? So there's this sudden pulse of healing, and again, everyone can hear the strain of the ship and what sounds like an almost weird electrical sound of things being um, placed back into uh, back into situ. Um, boards start once again re-slapping into place. There is definitely a healing effect that is taking place on the ship, but it's not particularly strong as of yet. No. No. Uh, Okay. Is you this can... helping? Um, should I try again? Should we? You you definitely get the feeling it is definitely fixing just from where you're stood in your astral form. Um, but it's up to everyone else how else that pans out. Um, I did something. Um, I think we're all really tired i don't know about the rest of you <laughs> i am <laughs> not at full capacity right now um, i could probably try one more time and if, then if, <laughs> gonna need the light if if you want to give it one more go i don't think any of us are going to stop you because it's clearly helping um unless I mean, anyone I, else objects like I definitely when I definitely tried like to cast the shields on it um like I would for a, a, an ally um it definitely did something so I would recommend it that is still in place by the way because you have not broken concentration on it yet nice Right. Stop it. Yeah, we'll try. We'll we'll give the we'll give the thing a bit more juice, and then it's nap time for Prosper. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my it's god. Day for twos. Um, okay. I mean, so you send another pulse of energy through. Um, this time you can hear more um, repairing, more things clicking back into spot, um, more boards basically returning into their original points. However, since you are now out of magic, there is a sudden boom as you hear Faith Jammer deactivating. Life Jammer no, I am done. activating. I am... <laughs> what hat? Sorry. Life Jammer activating. Oh, no. I am very done. I do not like the sound of that. Nope. <laughs> He's like, sound of what? <laughs> Okay, you stand up. Co Connie moves out of the way to make room for you, and your uh, your astral form dissipates. The sound of what? Life jammer. Mm -mm. That does not sound like something I want to be. I'm sure you are all very lovely people. I'm sure very nice boat. But I'm using that right now. 
Life jammer. Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. That's okay. mine. Said mind jammer. Did it? Mine said faith jammer. Faith jammer. Oh, he said faith jammer, and then I poof, all out of magic, and then it went life jammer, and I was like, no. I guess I'm not really someone of faith. Faith. Um. Yeah, no, that 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 makes more sense. Um, wonder what it would be for everyone else. Anyway, um, are we gonna do anything yeah, else? Does anyone else want to try anything? <laughs> ah, we have been. Uh, we are muted, Jade. My microphone was muted. Ah. <sighs> Good job, me. So proud. So proud of me. <laughs> and I went, and it's at this point, Serenity hops in the chair. <laughs> Oh, well, okay. there we go. <laughs> uh, right, you land in the chair, uh, grip a hold, and you hear spell jammer activated. Uh, I'll get you your tiny little token. <laughs> We're all coming to go. I am the spell jammer. <laughs> You're the only person here with arcane magic. That's true. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, you again get that sudden rush of being disbodied for a moment before you suddenly get the feeling of being the entire ship and your little uh, astral duplicate. Oh, this is interesting. This is this is like having a full body massage. Ooh. <laughs> it's not quite how I would have described, but sure. And maybe it's because, you know, I'm a sailor. Uh, yeah, I suppose you'd be more at home. I feel right at home. This is this is comfy. I could sit here forever. Uh, it was probably not a best idea, especially if that life jammer thing <laughs> happens again. Um, but sure. Life is just essentially like self-preservation. And right. I, mm, like the life support. Uh, I think that possibly it may use you as life support. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. If it's using people's faith, that's kind of what I got the idea of. I mean, and it was using. You're plugged in. You could just find out. Yeah, yeah. Can I can I now do another Arcana check on this thing? <laughs> now that I'm sat in the chair. Yes, you can. <laughs> At advantage. Yes. This is what I wanted. Advantage! No. Nope. Go, 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 go back. There we go. Oh, I've now seen the advantage oh, button. Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. Mm. Okay. What do you want to know? What do you want to know? Uh, I would like to know how to fix the spell jammer device. Um, as you sort of take that moment to think, there is this rocketing of various bits of information, like multiple tabs opening. Um, you do get the impression that fixing it in the same way as a ship will work. So if you take it to a dry dock and have it actually repaired, it will be repairable. Um, there is the option of direct healing. Uh, direct healing to the subject who is in the chair as well as direct healing from the subject in the chair will directly affect the ebon heart. Okay. So if anyone heals you while you're sat there, mm -hmm. it will heal the ebon heart as well. Okay. So if I use healing word, that is a possibility and would let it work. The third option is direct hit point transfer. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, let's let's not try that just yet. Let's, <laughs> on the other hand, do a healing word at second level. Okay, so I'm going to target the Ebon Heart turns. for you. <laughs> no twos, please. No twos. Uh, <laughs> Targeting the Ebon Heart. You may fire when ready. Okay, so uh, at second level, healing increases by 1d4 for each slot. So basically, two slots at default. Just push the button twice and I'll knock three points off of it. So seven points um, reduced. So. Yeah, what is it with all the twos? Yeah, that was another <laughs> set of twos. That's it. Um, you just throw energy 
into uh, yourself and by extension into the spell jamming vessel. Were you in any way, shape or form injured? You were not. Nope. So you don't heal anything, so don't but you now start hearing the constant sort of rapport of things, again, still clicking back into place. You, having breached below 50 hit points on it, now hear bring spell jammer online. Yay! 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 Spelljammer is back online. Yes. Welcome. And whilst I'm at it, I might as well continue to heal the ship because why not? So, All right. so healing word level two again. Okay. 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 Thank you for the one and a two. You absolute. Thirty-four-two. Okay. Again. You now can see that a good portion of the back um, damage has started to heal. Um, it's not completely over, um, but it no longer is exposing any of the drive. Okay. Healing word at first level. <laughs> okay. How many more of those are you going to do? Let's just speed this through. Uh, I'm going to do another two. Okay. So go for it and go for it. So if I take off all of those... Okay, you spend a good portion of time, everyone else in the surroundings, by the way, this particular shell that has come up and over this, um, it's more of a, a shell of wind. Um, it's quite see-through, however, it sort of buffets the closer you get to it. Um, there's a smell of the salt air uh, when you basically um, get anywhere near to it. And there was me hoping it was a shell of lightning. Mm, not yet. Ooh, uh, Let's get you more powerful, and then we'll talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you do see beneath that sort of shell, however, Serenity just glowing with healing energy. As <coughs> multiple blasts of healing go through her and into the ship. Now, wow. it's damaged. There's a lot of scorch marks, but everything seems relatively seaworthy. You could probably land and not sink on a planet at this rate. Okay. So the ship is a little bit better. It's not great, but it's better. We won't run into many issues if we happen to descend on a planet. All right. Okay. If we even and the spell drama device is on. So. <laughs> so. What's everyone else been doing while this has been happening? Because that's at least four or five rounds worth of stuff. Um, Prosper, we'll go round on the. We'll go round from Prosper around in a uh, clockwise circle. So Prosper first. Um, I think Prosper's probably just been kind of moseying around the kind of immediate area, kind of like looking out into the depths of space, trying to just be like, "This is fine. This is." <laughs> <laughs> this is all okay. It's gonna be. This is what we're dealing with now, kind of. Um, and probably just watching on and like seeing as bits and pieces are like snapping back in. Yeah. Fair. Peanut, what are you up to? Absorbing the surroundings. Um, doing some of what uh, Prosper has been doing. But uh, I'm also still interested in that doll. Um, <laughs> I've basically been keeping an eye on it to make sure that Bucky isn't doing anything, excuse the phrasing, but anything stupid with it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, just Well, that's a generally... good point. Can anyone else apart from them hear anything coming from it? Um, hmm. Actually, now you mention it, for each person who's been in the chair, you can now start to hear that little nursery rhyme coming from it. So everyone now. <laughs> Everybody can hear it. Why is there the nursery rhyme? It's the doll. What doll? Oh, Bucky. Can, um, can Connie, um, well, it's not a cast, it's a thing that she has of detect good and evil. Right. <laughs> okay. I don't trust that little okay. thing. I was waiting for this to be a thing I looked uh, after some time. You mean you define sense, yeah? Yes, my divine sense. 
Okay. To the idea to, you know, the location of any celestial fiend or unliving within 60 feet of you, not behind total cover. There is neither celestial, fiend, or unliving. However, <laughs> that doll radiates a very faint, and I want to mean background radiation, very faint, layer of necromancy. No. Into space. Into space. <laughs> No, no, no. You don't sense it. <laughs> Into space with okay then. Like voice. Into space with it. Nope. Nope. <laughs> I mean, get it. It's not doing us any harm. Connie's just like, what is that? What is that? It's a little dude that is an actual little dude. He whispers and sings. No. Don't let this don't let this stoic face fool you. Why have you got it? Well, um, Peanut said we should keep it. <laughs> I said we should. I said we should show everybody else to see if anyone recognised its making or whatever. Because clearly, we're not from the same place, and if anyone else might recognise where it might have come from, who might have? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. It's got but I don't... some kind of necromancy. It's not fully zombie, but it's not good. <laughs> The singing was. Wait, 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 wait. The singing wasn't necessarily coming directly from the doll. I mean, not to judge the doll by appearances, but if you look at the doll, it does look to be male in gender. But the singing voice I heard was definitely a feminine one. Now, it could it could could still be the same individual. I don't know this person, this doll very well, obviously, but. Uh, uh, you didn't you I don't, I don't know. issue with person, spooky though. music before. I know. Bucky, I'd say it's been about an hour, mate. It's been about an hour. Chat <laughs> saying it's about an hour. Uh, roll me a wisdom uh, saving throw. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my highest stat, yes. Go on. Uh, wisdom saving. Here comes a two. <gasps> oh, you got to love it when it happens. So, I'll play the barbarian next. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of pick this doll up and look at it, and the shape of it changes. Uh, it now looks like your dad, and the music sounds very much like your mother. <coughs> it doesn't change for the rest of us. Uh, no, because you are not tuned to it. Oh no. Yep. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Also, uh, while holding this, Bucky, uh, any attempt at a short rest will get you double your hit dice in healing if you choose to use any. Hmm. <laughs> well. Well. Papa Bear. Okay. Where's it going that from? Perhaps. Nothing is does, said. Does it, it's, does it just look like him or is it actually shrunk? It looks like him. It looks like him. I like that dude that just like got smaller. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's uh, not changed its size, but it changes its features to match. I check, the, I check under the kilt. Um, it's um, Ken Dold. <laughs> oh, Dad, what have they done to you? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What are you on about? It, it's my dad. It looks it's, exactly the same. It, no, no. It, does, it doesn't look... How to put this? It looks like a halfling. Now, it has changed in shape. It, however, has not okay. changed to match any of your parents. Okay. 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 That's just. Fine. It has changed shape to match the person who's holding it. Right. Okay. Right. So it looks like an old version of Bucky. Yeah, basically. Can, can we take that away from you? No. Does it make you? I keep, I keep, I keep the doll. <laughs> It doesn't make you feel anything, right? Like you're not in pain or feeling sick or anything like that? Nope. Nope. Okay. 
And Connie hasn't said that it's necromancy. She feels off of it. No, she has. She has said it now. Yeah, oh, she has. Yeah, she has. Uh, uh, well, it's it is probably. using probably. necromancy. You do not want to keep that. Mm -mm. Uh, I can't help wondering have, where this came from. Does anyone have detect magic? I'm going to prod at this one a little. Don't have magic. Not that I would be able to use, I don't think. I'm flat. It's not a spell I have. <laughs> well, that's just awkward. It really is. No, I don't have it prepped. Yeah, not prepped. Not prepped. Um, Saddest of times. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Perish. Um, um, I have command. <laughs> I mean, do you want me to bend the doll? I want to. I want to know where it came from. I just. What? I just. Hmm? It could be from absolutely what? anywhere, and it would not mean anything to most of us. Yeah. He's got a point. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why has it changed shape? But I'm and is it sure actually no doing? Where is it you're actually... from, necromancy is bad. Uh, I guess. Can I do an arcana check on the doll, please? Uh, from your current position, uh, intertwined with the ship, I'm no. going to say no. But if you step away, yes. Okay. In that case, I will step away. Okay. You step off of the uh, <coughs> the chair, uh, your spectral self deactivates, and again, the ship feels like it uh, becomes heavier, almost like it's lost its buoyancy, lost its power. Um, the shell goes down. You're welcome to... Uh, I, can't, I can't check it if you like. Yes, yes, I, I think I shall. AJ, do I know... No, no, I do not know what that is. Do you know what was? That? Do I know the? Do I know what the effect is on me? Yes. As in, do yes. I know that it it's going to revitalize me every time I come? You, you know, are aware that, that as long as you are holding this, you will get quite a peaceful night's rest, or a any rest you take will be quite peaceful. It's not that bad a thing, to be fair. This doll's. Probably magical, going on the flat. <laughs> so it's mine. And yeah, you're such a magical you, person, Bucky. Lucky. <laughs> I am. I, I had a bit of wizard training when I was <coughs> training. Necromancy <laughs> comes at the cost. Yes, you know the cost. It is. Well, I'll give you 24 gold for it. I do not want the doll. I want no one to have the doll. Actually, hold. No, I'll have the doll. You have the gold. Hold on a second. It's just occurred to me. Um, you can cast detect magic as a ritual. You know, Connie. Connie. Ooh, can I now? That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, it, yes, please. It just occurred to me the <laughs> fact that it is a. That's what you can do with it. Um, okay. Uh, you will take ten minutes. Ten minutes. It will take ten minutes, and you will require the doll in your hands. Because I still have a spell. <laughs> Or maybe two, actually. You've got two sure. spell slots left, but yep. using it ritually doesn't take up a spell slot. Nice. Nor do you need, okay. it, need it prepared. Are you taking the doll from Bucky? You will yeah. need to hold it. Yeah. Yeah. Are you letting her? Yes. Ooh. Standing really close to the ritual. <laughs> okay. I'm just, I'm just checking it, Bucky. I'm just checking it, okay? Well, you'll be hurting my dad. So, you take I'm pretty sure my dad's dead. the small halfling doll and begin your casting of the ritual magic version of Tet Magic. After ten minutes, provided there are no interruptions, is anyone going to interrupt it in any way, shape, or form? No, I'm, I'm I probably want to now. start a short rest, but that's about it. <laughs> okay. I'm quite like a long rest, ideally. <laughs> Either or, mate. Either or. Playing a flute. That's all I'm doing. I'm playing a flute. Holding on to it, <laughs> you do get the first sort of... There's like three, maybe four layers of magic to this doll. The first is minor illusion. Oh, okay. You imagine piecing it together, that's how it's made to look like and sound like the person's 
whatever. Transmutation. And you would take the assumption the other type would probably be conjuration magic. Those three are heavily intertwined and make up the majority of this thing's power. The necromancy is very present, but like I say, it is a background radiation. Not so much that it is an intrinsic part of the doll, but it is an intrinsic part of where the doll possibly has been made. Okay, but she doesn't, like, as per earlier, she doesn't actually detect evil as such. There is no feeling of evil intent for it. There is no celestial, fiendish, or unliving presence. There is just that background feeling of necromancy. Okay. So Connie's just like, okay, it's got some interesting magics in it, but the necromancy is definitely a background thing. Like, it's more, it will change to look like what you want it to look like. And it's got some other kind of magics in there as well, but it's not evil, mate. If you want it, take it. It's subjective, surely. It's not evil. Trust me. Sorry, not conjuration, enchantment. That's what I meant. Okay. I'll take the doll back. Okay. Well, you take the doll back. I will add it to inventory. <laughs> if it's not evil and it's not killing anyone and it's not turning anyone into any zombies currently, uh, I'd like to go to bed. I don't know about anybody else, but I really, I feel like I could do with a nice long rest, a bit of meditation, and then we can work out where we go from there. Because I think if any of us continue on what we've got right now, we'll probably just going to faint i have to agree uh rest would be delightful right now should we do this in shifts or that in another spider i'll do first shift you lot seem okay. to be, uh, look okay. quite drained I can oh. do all that. no no okay thank you like, he does give like the doll a proper stink eye though as he passes like <laughs> i hold it up to a uh, prosper yeah. <laughs> it will bring yeah. no good you do get the impression just as a uh, a note for everyone involved that while you can see relatively far and walk around and watch um if you're wanting to take any of the watchers, the easiest way and best way of doing it is from the chair. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm Connie will take a watch. Connie will take a watch. Okay, first, well, second, third. There's nothing third. to stop Bucky from taking a watch. Yeah, real There is nothing to stop yeah, Bucky. No. Yeah, no. I'll take first watch. Um, then Connie will take second. It's probably a good idea to keep two people on the deck anyway. Okay. So what, we're sleeping one at a time? Sleeping in, um, basically three are sleeping, two are up at any one time, I think. Mm. Mm. Yes. Mm. As long okay. as it means that our spellcasters can get off <laughs> <laughs> <That's real good. laughs> I would really like some sleep. I get in the chair. You get in the chair. Oh, come on, Becky. As you sit down, you, you sit place down, your hands onto it, you hear, you hear life jammer life activated. Jammer. <laughs> you oh, are aware, Bucky, aware, Bucky, if you, if you spend, spend five, five hit points, five hit points you, can move this vessel. you can move this vessel. Full speed. <laughs> <laughs> no. This is mitigatable. <laughs> By using a rage instead, in your case. Oh, you mean them that I don't have? Those that you are currently without, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I will spend 20 hit points. Oh my god! Bearing in mind that there are <coughs> no healers. Don't worry, I rest really well. The doll, my father, and mother's sweet voice. Okay. Well, uh, oh, after I've shipped myself, that I've just turned into a girl. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's really a token. I haven't actually got a token ready for you yet because uh, artwork still to be coming. Um, I shall oh. 20 points in the direction of the spear. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> 
I oh. hope we wake up in the morning and Prosper is just going to head to bed. Like, Serenity is also just going to head to bed. It's fine. I used to be a sailor. Um, <laughs> the um, spectral form that appears for you, Bucky, is one of your totem animals. It is a wolverine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Amazing. Nice. I, um, I had a Wolverine token. I couldn't help it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to uh, meditate on the forecastle before I go for my long rest because <laughs> I need to meditate. Um, and that takes half an hour. And then after that, I will happily go into one of the bunks and start a lovely, lovely long rest. If that's okay. That is more than fair. <coughs> you head into the bunk after a while, get some rest. So... I'm going to be honest with you, space is large. And for that reason, everyone manages to achieve over time, unless they are doing any level of shenanigans. Nope. So first thing, first watch, <laughs> is anyone doing anything that's Bucky and who else is with? Connie. Bucky and Connie. Are either you two doing anything this watch? No, Connie's just kind of keeping an eye out, making sure he's okay, kind of going between him and, like, kind of patrolling the deck where she can see everything as far as she can see. I um, I get off the chair after me 20 points of travelling and I put the doll in the chair to see if it does anything. Uh, you <laughs> place the doll in the chair. Just let us do our long rounds. <laughs> so you're actually, you are actively moving the vessel. Uh, <laughs> And while, if, are you moving at spell jamming speed or are you going to move at normal speed? However fast to catch that spear. <laughs> okay, firstly, um, it's um, maybe under a burst of spell jamming manages to catch you up to that spear. In fact, you get actually making yourself in front of it and the spear dink, sticks into the back of the vessel. So you don't effectively manage to shoot yourself in the backside. That's some skill too. I'm also a ranger. <laughs> Second, uh, you then return back to spell jamming speed. Um, the lights of um, the stars whipping past you as you move. Um, you only need to spend the ten points because once you've activated spell jamming, you don't need to uh, until a few hours have passed use any more hit points oh. provided there's not additional maneuvers that need making yeah. essentially turn it on and go yeah uh, it requires just a token thing it's not going to take the whole amount so one to burst catch second five to go again um after what a couple of hours you come to a stop basically standing up moving away from the chair um your senses were massively extended throughout the whole time and there are now larger celestial bodies on the very periphery of your vision a large sort of uh, big asteroids uh, much larger than the ones you've seen before in fact closer to the one you escaped from in this kind of size it looks like something has broken apart here possibly some sort of a planet or uh, some sort of um uh huge uh, meteorite moon, moon or something that has moon, broken them to pieces. Um, um, you managed to sort of settle to the vessel in to uh, an alcove almost, an catching alcove. to the gravity of it. Um, here you're practically uh, invisible and probably would make a good place for everyone else to catch up with the rest. Yeah. And then you're putting the doll in the chair. <laughs> I forgot about that. So I'm you sad. place the doll to the chair and there is a slight glow from it. Nothing occurs... Can you hear me, Dad? Can you hear you? Nothing else occurs from the doll, but you do notice that the chair seems to glow ever so slightly. And around sort of the the four legs of the chair is a slight coiling white mist <laughs> are you going to leave that doll on that chair hey, Connie come and have a look at this come and have a look at this Connie grabs for the doll 
to pull it off the chair. What are you doing? Okay. She's, got, okay. she's grabbing. The second you grab that doll and pull it away, you just see the mist around the legs just dissipate and go. It's a healing doll. <laughs> I've changed my mind. I don't like it. I'm keep, I'll keep hold of it. Hold of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's not very nice. Not very nice, is it? <laughs> so you're just holding on to the doll. It's yours now, is it? She's going to kind of like kinda be like, like, I'll take it and then just kind of go and hide it kind of somewhere in the room where it came from. Right. Away so from, from somewhere where Bucky can't. Basically, she's going to try and hide it away from Bucky, but she doesn't want it near her person. So put it under his bed. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to place it under. Then. Say again. Mm-hmm. Everyone's going to hear the whispering, though, if it's in the same room as them. Oh, yeah. 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 Basically. Uh, as you, as you get into space. Okay, she's gonna hide it under the ballista. <laughs> okay. So you take the doll and start hiding it under the ballista. Bucky, are you just gonna stand there and let this happen or no, not when he's there. <laughs> no, but you have taken it. Like, you've taken it off. I, like, I just I just tap her on the shoulder. What are you doing, Colin? Okay, I'm, I'm just putting it there to deal with its thing. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. I don't trust it. It's not you healing. You trusted it a moment ago. I don't trust it now, though. Look, where did the chair? I don't like it. I don't like it. The chair glowed. I thought you magic folk liked it when things glowed. I don't like this. I don't like this. Mm-mm. You've changed, Connie. You've changed. In the three hours I've known you. <laughs> <laughs> So, so can I have it if I promise not to put it on the chair? Yeah, just don't interfere with the ship stuff again. Don't put it on the chair. So I'll leave the ship to you, lot, yeah. Oh, by the way, did you like my driving? I managed to park it upside of a giant rock. I mean, you did pretty good. You did pretty good. I was just as impressed. I'm gonna have no problems with that. Just don't put that. Don't put that doll near the chair until the others are up. On my honour as a paladin, I will not put it on the chair. You're a paladin, are you? Okay. Just sometimes. Okay. I am so making you take a level of every class. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. That is a catastrophe waiting to happen. You give the doll back, yeah? I'll give the doll back, yes. Bucky, what do you do with the doll? I attach it back to my uh, hero belt mm-hmm. and just pat Dad on the head. You hear a very sort of cheerful, sleepy nursery rhyme sent up to you. Are we, uh, are we still on watch? Or is it our I think it's about time, time to about shift time um, to the next watch. I need to be angry tomorrow. <laughs> okay, who's second one? I'll take the next one. I'll, take the next one. Uh, uh, I'll keep you company. Okay. Okay, then. <laughs> Poor peanut. <laughs> so, um, who's on the, the watch then? Place yourselves in the quarter deck in that box for me, please. I will move anyone else around... So Bucky can go down there. It's Prosper and Serenity. I'm just hanging out. (laughs) Okay. Are you guys doing anything for the evening? I am playing my flute. (laughs) Well, are you in? Are you in the chair? Uh, I don't think. I don't think we need to be in the chair. The the ship I think is still moving. The best way to do it would was to be in the chair. Being what sat in the chair know? extends your senses out. Yeah. Fine, I'll sit you. in the chair. Right. right. It's too late. I'm sat in the chair. <laughs> My ship now. My ship now. <laughs> your watch, as stated, goes through quite uneventfully. It is. Quite soothing, uh, Prosper, just to hear the uh, quiet of space and a lone flute playing through it. 
That's nice. <laughs> Actually, maybe performance check. Let's see how nice it is. Yeah. <laughs> performance Two. check. This is where I shine. <laughs> she says, wait, da, 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 da. press the wrong buttons again. The wrong buttons. There we go. There we go. It's, a <laughs> it's the space equivalent of Epic Sax Guy. And not yeah. quite as peaceful uh, or as well put as I was just making it out to be. It's not great, but it's not bad. It's not a natural one. That's the important part. I'm slightly out of practice. It's been a hard day. It has been an incredibly hard day, and I'm still quite tired. Okay. A couple of hours pass. You guys all get your rest. The last watch is Peanut and... Peanut. Just be up. No, it can just be me. That's fine. It's, it's only fair. Okay. Well, we are already up, and it seems probably not the best idea to have someone up here alone. Whatever. <laughs> so who's going up then? We have Peanut and... Prosper again? Yeah, I think he'll just, like, stay, kind of... Do you want to take the chair, or...? I'll take the chair. I've had enough. I've had enough rest. I'll be all right. And just like, so I can, like, kind of like, keep an eye on things. Hang, hang around up there, basically just keeping company, because they're stationary, so... Okay. So, after what is a good eight hours' worth, everyone ends up with the equivalent of a long rest. Yay. Rage, 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 yeah. I rage. Uh, <laughs> Why? <laughs> I get out of bed angry. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to rage. Bless you. So, um, the asteroid that you're on, basically, you've got to squirrel yourself into a, a very sort of easy um, to escape from area, but one that is quite hard to see from the outside. Um, it would appear that whenever you're in the actual um, chair itself, you effectively, you move as though you were effect an, an animal of some description. You have no, um, it doesn't basically work like you're going to trip over your own feet or you end up uh, crashing into something. You have complete control over your motor functions effectively. Um, so while it was a skillful bit of piloting effectively to park yourself there, it just felt natural. It's like there was no effort behind it. As this asteroid is spinning, eventually, as everyone starts coming up to consciousness, and the last person on the chair is Peanut. Yep. Peanut. You can see directly ahead of you what must be um, maybe a mile, two miles um two miles into the uh, the field of vision for the ship. Another large rock. Except this one looks like it's covered in something. Okay. There's parts of it that are greenery. Parts of it that looks like it's been attached with wood. Um, as your senses kind of extend and then extend again, you can now see houses. You can see a large cave that looks like it's got other ships of a very similar type that are docking in and out and moving around the actual asteroid itself. Um, there are almost the uh, people on there. You can't be 100% sure because it's very hard to focus. <coughs> However, it definitely does look populated. Specifically, it kind of looks like this. And it's another giant spider. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. Is everyone capable of seeing that? Because I don't yes. think yeah. someone was. <laughs> so who, I, it's I, Peanut who can't. Peanut the look of the sharing button. One in the chair. Can you see it, Kate? Can you see it, Kate? Have we got a Kate? No, we don't. No, on my we don't. She no. has disconnected, according to uh, fancy grounds. But that's fine. Yeah. Because in honesty, provided everyone else can see it, I'm sure she'll catch up. Because uh, yep. eleven o'clock, and that's where we end. <laughs> that as your yeah. next viewpoint. 
Has everyone enjoyed themselves everyone tonight? Enjoyed themselves. Yeah. Really good. <laughs> yeah. Was... Goddamn dolls and ships. <laughs> <laughs> that that doll is innocent, I swear. My actions were completely different until you turned it into my dad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will I will inform some people when we're off air about what that doll does and why specifically because by now you would have had the uh, you'd have had the item sheet effectively for it mm. yeah so mm. okay right uh, thank you very much for everybody watching uh, I hope you enjoyed it it's been great AJ's done a cracking job again loving it episode 3 will be next Tuesday at half past 7 GMT time um, tune in, we'll keep shouting about it we'll keep tweaking stuff for it to be all exciting and colourful as you all watch uh, great to have full party, Luke, Jade great to have you Yay! Uh, Yay! I do like the accents they're very good <laughs> um, unfortunately Peanut's really good at holding still so that's brilliant um, yeah she's uh, got blue yeah. screen of death sadly yeah. oh, oh. who, who uh, yeah, see you later, guys. Take care of yourselves, and we'll see you in a week. See you in a week, boys and girls. Time for us to have a long rest. Yeah, long rest time. Long rest, long rest.